<laughs> there you go. We are live on a Monday. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome on into another Monday live with the Whiskey Crusaders. I'm. You're oh, Will. Who? Yeah, he's... I think you're Will. Will. I'm Will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sarah. I'm Sarah. That I'm one's back. Matt. Not Matt. And then down here we got Donald. He's joining us from Glendalock. And we're going to be talking right. some, some fun Irish whiskeys. Mm -hmm. hey, Matt? Well, your you pronunciation know? was phenomenal. Thank you very much, good Ten sir. Like our good coaching. <laughs> <laughs> Who's in the chat with us already? All right, we, we got, got Linux chat. Team. We got our buddy Brian or Pit Face Barbecue. We got Mike Franklin. We got Kilko. Go check out Kilko's channel. Please check out his. We've got let's see. Oh, there's a there's a lovely commercial. What do we get the commercial for today? Some hair growth product. Mmm, that sounds awesome. All right. We have uh let's see. Who's my place? It's Scott Moody. We've got oh I, a name I cannot remotely pronounce. Um, I'm gonna go with that some kind of Gaelic. I'm no clue. Sorry, cannot pronounce it. Old man Joe, uh Jeremy Burns, Charles Asworth, old man. Let's see. Oh, there's is that Ed? That's fucking Ed. <laughs> God damn it, Ed. <laughs> It's like, wait a second, I know that symbol. You're like and, dropping it and dropping F bombs like two minutes in. <laughs> Jesus, Matt. <laughs> I, I, I told you I'm not allowed to curse. My mother doesn't like it. But okay. like, here's him dropping F bombs off the gate. <laughs> All right, hey, Andriana, how's it going? We got Nick in here. We got Sugar Kitty. All right, oh, there's something. And there's something from uh, our buddy Sam. If you guys haven't checked out Sam's channel, please do. Where's my sword and shield? All right, there it is. Oh, put in the wrong spot tonight. All right. Oh, where did the where did the damn thing go? Damn you. All right. First of all, St. Patty's never St. Patty's. St. Patty. Thanks, Sam. Appreciate it. All right. Oh my god. All right. Well, what did I get myself into talking to with the likes of you? Oh my god. <laughs> Bunch of crazy bastards, what you get. I'm glad I have a bottle of Guinness Extra sound here on the side of me. Well, it's always a plus. It's always a nice, good uh, Irish beer there. Can't go wrong with that for St. Patty's Day. That's for yeah. sure. All right. Well, I guess you want to introduce yourself and talk all about Glendalock. We're very excited and uh, some fantastic Irish whiskey this evening. Right before me, me talk about myself? Are you serious? Yes, I know. No, no, I'm, I'm, very, I'm very shy. I can't be doing that. <laughs> Uh, I, sure. I, I don't know. I, I, I think you got the wrong person here. Um, only joking, only joking. Uh, Matt, Will, Sarah, an absolute pleasure to be speaking with you. Thanks for having the likes of me on. My name is Donald Francis O'Gallagher from the Glendalock Distillery. I know we like to make things hard to pronounce. Sorry about that. There will be no tests going forward. But we are one of the first craft distilleries in Ireland. We set up about 10 years ago. Um, we have been part of this rising tide of new distilleries and this renaissance of Irish whiskey. And, um, you know, there's two sort of the drivers in terms of why we set up the distillery. One is this distillation heritage that dates back to 584 AD to these old monistic settlements like Glendalock, where we're based. You know, and if you, if you want to really geek out about that, the birthplace of distillation for consumption came from there. Irish monks were traveling mm -hmm. From society to society in the sixth century, scribing down different techniques, whether it's agricultural techniques, whether it's technological advances, they came across the art form of distillation. They brought it back to Ireland where they started to distill beer. They called it Ishka Baha, which was anglicized to Ishki and then anglicized to whiskey from there. That's where the root of it comes from. But this point in the sixth century, it sort of spreads out throughout the island of Ireland excuse me, uh, it becomes more of an agricultural pursuit where these farmers would distill excess grains, what have you. Where that changes when the English came in, in the 1500s with the Tudor's conquest, they started to get a taste for this thing called Ishkaba, Ishki, whiskey. They started to anglicize it. And then they did what the English are known to do. They started to tax it. So you get to this point in 1661 where King Charles II, who's a bit of a bastard, made all distillation illegal on Christmas Day, and this created a rift in how whiskey or putching was distilled. So your rural distillers keep on making this thing called putching, which all we right. actually have over here, which is the precursor to whiskey, the mezcal is the tequila, putching is Irish whiskey. Well, your bigger distilleries, they go bigger, they go home, they start making really quality Irish single malts, no smoke, no peat, 
trade in your Scottish style. <laughs> that style of whiskey took over the world for the next three, nearly 400 years. Irish whiskey at one point was estimated that 80% of every drop of whiskey drank in the globe was Irish whiskey. Holy crap, 80 Yes. Wow. And we went from 80% of the world's whiskey consumption to nearly non-existence in the span of 15 years. Because you don't like to make things easy. Yeah, for real. Wow. That talk about a drastic drop to go from 80%, you know, with, I guess, what, the two world wars, Prohibition, the Irish uh, Civil War. Yeah, you know, you're talking about the First World War because it was the drink of Russian czars, all of royalty. You're talking about all of the monarchs in Europe and then all of these export markets for Irish whiskey. So you have the First World War, then you have our Civil War, trade war, uh, our Civil War, their war of independence. It's usually war and taxation is like a running theme within Irish whiskey history. Um, but so First World War, our war of independence, then our civil war, then a trade war with Britain and all of its colonies. They would have couldn't get any worse. You guys introduced prohibition. So, yeah, because uh, we're yeah, assholes. Yeah. That, yeah. Thank you very much for that. That was, that was very nice. Yeah. 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 You can thank okay, uh, you know those jackasses there in the government for that. As usual, the government fucks shit up. What a surprise. Yeah. You, you guys blame stuff on the government. We, bl we blame it on the English. Whatever. Yeah. The same thing, right? It's all same shitty, shitty things. In, in, in English and tax. In, everything I'm ever going to talk about is going to go English taxation. Pretty English much. English or taxation. It could be a combination of the both. Could be one, could be the other. Uh, we have a question here from the Linux cat. He wants to know, is Pochine Irish new make or is it Moonshine or what exactly is it? Well, Moonshine is a poor imitation of Pochine. Okay. Right. So a lot of people who, who fled Ireland, who Scots Irish heritage, they came to uh, the northeast of America. They had a distilling back then, background, right? They were distilling mm -hmm. Pochine. And they went into America. They couldn't get barley. So they started to say were corn. They started to say were rye. They went down the Appalachian Trail. That's where, that's where you get some of the, That's why some of these brands are called like Old Fitzgerald. That's why they're called McHenry's. You know, it's like this is the distilling heritage that they came from. But, you know, long story short is Puck Gene is a precursor to whiskey, right? Puck Gene is, it, it can only be made in the island of Ireland. Typically made exclusively for malted barley. Sometimes you would bring in different crops, different fruits, what have you, and uh, it typically smoked. So it's a subcategory of whiskey. It's not quite whiskey. It's its own thing. Same way with uh, your mezcal to the keto reference. Okay. So that's my long way of not answering your, uh, your your person's question. Okay. He wants to know, is it una it's unaged? Yes. Yes, okay. it is unaged. So putching, uh, how to drink putching is in a rush with a purpose. Okay. So you always, like, so, so putching has a lot of, uh, I wish I had a lighter hair, but um, it's, it's flammable, typically higher ABV, a lot of superstition to it. You rub it on greyhounds uh, before races, run around, put it on race horses, you just put a okay. glass drop out uh, okay. on the ground for the fairies. A lot of superstition by it. And for, for many communities, it was the only source of revenue for a long time. They used to drink it in these illicit bars called She Beans. Um, so you might might have heard of a bar or heard of something called a She Bean. So, it's a, that, that's so it's kind of like a speakeasy, basically? Yeah, but less fancy, you know. There's less no fancy. wearing dicky bows or, you know, there's no suspenders in the She Bean. <laughs> It's we had poured ourselves. We had poured ourselves the gin accidentally first because you know I can't read Matt's handwriting, and it's clear. <laughs> it's weird. So well, I don't know if I now I got the protein. Gin. Now I got the protein in my glass. Donald, uh, we've had somebody ask, "Can you move your microphone a little bit closer to you?" We don't care if it's in the shot. It's uh, you're still just a little bit soft. Can you hear me now? Oh, yes. that's beautiful. <laughs> here we go. Look at that fancy oh, materials here. Nice. That's cool. Super fancy. <laughs> you can definitely hear me all right. Everything's good. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's quite a bit better. So, so when we talk about like distillation heritage, we talk about putching, putching whiskey, aquavit, O de V, Ishkaba, Ishki whiskey. They're all interchangeable in the 1600s. So, where that changed is in 1661, as I mentioned, King Charles II, a bit of a bastard, and all that. Your biggest, your big distilleries get a grant to distill, 
they start to ra- ramp ramp up how they distill, increase pot cell capacity, age spare. Your rural distillers did not do that. They kept on distilling in a very traditional method, which was exclusively barley, pot still distilled, double distilled, cut points by taste and smell, fire, I'm uh, sorry, yeah, heat source by fire. And it was on your reputation, it was on your livelihood, it was on your last name. And certain areas of Ireland to this day are renowned for their putchy. And uh, it was outlawed from 1661 to 1997. Good Lord. Wow. But that didn't stop people making them. No, well, I wouldn't have yeah. so. I mean, if a pot still was passed down from generation to generation yeah, for it got used. Well, you, you <laughs> would have to break it down and hide it. They used to put, like, community fines on... Uh, what Donald made in the given name? Donald. Yeah, yeah, he was Donald. Yeah, I'm not going to Donald too, these so. days. Yeah, also want to say hi to Kira from uh, Shelf Turds. If you guys haven't checked out Shelf Turds, check out theirs as well. And Whiskey Mountains also has an Instagram. If you want to check out her stuff as well. All right. I like this. So this is 110 proof, the poaching here. and uh, Not for the faint heart, then. Not no, the I think it tastes oh. fantastic. It's, it's But it hot. drinks. It drinks closer to 100. It doesn't drink. Well, I tell you what, uh, here, I, you know, uh, Will, if you want to move that around the side of your glass, look at the legs down the side of it. This behaves like a brown spirit down the side of the glass. It's yeah, possible that, to yeah. sell. Malt, it's exclusively malted barley. So it's big, wow. heavy, thick, viscous. Right. Like that's and it has nice. this like bready sweet note to it. It does. Oh, I like it. I do too. Because <laughs> this is the first time I ever had it. This is really good. If you yeah, look at here. this and you look at what's in your glass, every single bottle that you have behind you there that's in a liquor store that's on a bar all has its roots in this. This is the first spirit ever distilled. And this is the first thing that we ever distilled and it was not back to that heritage. Uh, I think it's cool as all hell. And I, I think, you know, this is an ancient, ancient style of whiskey before whiskey was even a, was even a fucking word. Excuse my language, man. Don't tell me, man. Don't tell me, man. Fuck, fuck, fuck. It's okay. She, 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 she will kill me. How does it um, taste? Does it taste? Throw up Linux Cat's uh, I don't think it right tastes taste. young at all. Because I, mean, I don't either. I don't think it tastes young. This doesn't no, taste like really a new make corn. At all, it, it's and that's the thing too. Is it being malted barley? It's barley. So different than everything else I think I've ever had is either in corn. Only other, the only other new make in general I've ever had uh, was that one from Aberfeldy. But Aberfeldy. But that still tastes young. This doesn't. It's just no. Super it, it, yeah, it has a nice weight to it. it you know, it, it behaves like a brown spirit in a glass. Yeah, it really it does. Like the brown spirits in a little bit. It's yeah. bready. It's juicy. It's big. Strong it's more sweet. backbone to it, you know. No- um, it's beautiful in cocktails, you know. I always have a bottle in the freezer if people are over, you know. I pour out shots of it, you know. It's you know, it's, it's it is what it is, you know. It's it's it's, it's made to be drank, you know. People yeah. were waiting around. People back in the day, they weren't waiting around, you know. Especially, you know, the common man drank putching, the aristocrat and the Americans and all that. They drank whiskey, but. People, people try putching. They like the first record of a cocktail is with putching. It was putching butter mint in a broth. It was a buttery, minty, hmm. alcoholic beverage supposed to cure all your ales and all the rest of that. Perfect. See, that's exactly the perfect choice. So we that dates this- back to the 1600s for everyone there. Is there any ceremony? No ceremony whatsoever. Okay. But we will talk about mash builds. We will talk about uh, split mash bills and a very distinctive style within mm-hmm. Irish whiskey. And my, it's, if someone asked my name earlier in terms of it, is it uh, Anglicize of Donald? So my name is Donal. So it's D O Fada, which is the little squiggly thing over the O N A L. Mm-hmm. So that used to be D O M H N A L L N A I L L. So no one could say that. So if, okay. you, if anyone likes Star Wars out there, you'll know there's a character called Donald Gleason who plays one of the people in it, and he spells his name like that, but it's been anglicized down to D O N A L. Yes. Okay. So it's almost yeah, like, like Domino. We like to make things hard to pronounce. Absolutely. <laughs> it's kind of a requirement at this point, apparently. Is it, isn't it just? Uh, see, Donnie Williams Cat wants to know: Is it readily available to get the Pucci in the United States? Because I know I never seen it here. Yeah, you know, we used to do a lot of work on the putching. 
Um, people don't drink a lot of poutine. We want them to. They don't really do that. Um, but we're available in 24 states, available nationally through liquorbaron.com, reserve, reserve, reservebar.com. Okay. And they deliver it right to your door, every single state. Um, depends where you are. You feel free to shoot me a line if, if you want. Um, but yeah, we, uh, it's available nationally. We're in most major cities. Okay. Awesome. Good to know. Because this Brand is, is beautiful. The reason years. why most people don't drink more po po protein is because they don't drink this. This is beautiful. Well, and they've never. They probably a. They don't know what it is. That's that's the first thing. They're like, oh, it's some kind of white. I think it's moonshine. It's really not. This is really really. Good. I, I I that or it's like the cheese curd thing from Canada. Poutine. Mm. Poutine. Mm. A lot of people think it's that. Yeah, which is a totally yeah. different thing because it's I'd funny. Probably, I, I, I'd get down for some of those right now, to be honest. Those with are you. delicious. I'd love to do a, like a poutine and poutine night. I think that'll be great. I know we got to try those for the first time. We were up in Wisconsin last summer and tried it. Oh my gosh, those things were freaking amazing. I would love to have some of those with this. Beautiful. That would be great. Yeah. I would enjoy the hell out of that. I like it. So, I like that glass line. you're drinking out of, how do you pronounce that glass and do you, how do you like it compared to a Glen Karen? Uh, so, so, this is a Tua glass. Okay. So Tua, T U A T H. Okay. Right. You, you, you're making a dyslexic uh, whiskey guy. <laughs> Spell out things. Thank you very much for that, Matt. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Um, so the, the, there's a great lady called uh, Rosie, and uh, she's behind this, her and her family. And uh, I believe they're from uh, Waterford Glass or Waterford Crystal. Right. And Waterford Crystal went belly up a while ago, and all their production went no, down here. I they set up this beautiful glass company. And I like it a lot because if you see there... I can hold this glass without warming the whiskey. So if I'm doing, if I'm getting all fancy and doing doing notes to it, I don't want any type of impact like that. Right. You have like that in your kind of currents. Um, and also, I just like the shape of it because I can nose whiskey from the top to the bottom to the side to the side. Um, right. And I, I, I just think it plays very well. You know, I think it plays very well, and it's, um, it's good support. It's good to support good people, and you know you. You shop local and you, you you support people that are doing good things and Absolutely. we love Rosie and we love all of them and they're they're, they're just good people. So yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to, we'll have to order some of those and try, give us a try and new review and I've never used those before. Well, I tell you what, I'll, I'll send you out a few that have our logo on them. Okay, that'd be awesome. I appreciate it. Yeah, hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So, so whiskey knows says my last name is McLeod. I should know more. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, what the hell is that? What's the shield and the sword thing? Oh well, since we're whiskey crusaders, we got to. So every time somebody gives a super chat, we we smack the uh, sword and shield. I'm eventually gonna get a metal one, but for right now, it's this, this, this cheap one from from uh, medieval times I got like 20 years ago. Works just fine for the moment. So until we can get one that's actually metal, which would be really cool and really really freaking loud. Yeah, it's gonna be loud. So but it'll loud. be beautiful, and I don't care. People I mean, have I, I, I think it's gonna gonna like, the, like the full armory stuff that they had back in the day. Oh yeah, they had full armory. Yeah, I've got um, I've got a, a sword, another couple swords and some daggers in the other room. We've got some undercoat for some armor as well that I got when I was in high school. When I was much skinnier than I could wear that crap. Uh, unfortunately, not anymore. Way too fast. The, the, the shitty thing is, people were like five foot four back then. Well, it's okay. Yeah. We still are, so it's fine. I'm five six. Will's five six. Uh, okay, I'm five six. Okay, five, six. okay. Well, I, I'm like just shy of six foot, but like people back then were were small. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. Whenever sure. you actually look at that old stuff, it's like tiny. Mm -hmm. I might even bring it on. Yeah. So you know, it's all good. I'm legal hobbit. That's right. <laughs> the way it works. But no, I I like the hell out of this. I'm shocked right. how freaking good this is. I like the proof on it too. I think that's really nice. I this is really cool. I'll have to, we'll have to make some cocktails at some point with that. That's I want to buy like five gallons of it and put it in a five gallon barrel. Oh, <laughs> dude, that'd be amazing. Do it, man. I'd buy, uh, I'd buy the barrel if you want. <laughs> there you go. All right. So send me the glass. Also, hit the shield. <laughs> Thanks, Whiskey Nose. Whiskey Nose. All yes. right. We got one from Donnie. Says, from Donald to Donald. Thanks for staying up to hang out with us tonight. I ordered some, some glass. Oh, he already ordered some of the glass. Oh, nice. Thank you very much. It's really nice. 
Sorry. Yeah, I, 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 I love them. I, I think they're great for nose, and I think they're very comparable to the Glen Currens, and I think they're they're different because they there's a little bit more length to them. So yeah. I think you, you get a little bit different. Okay. I think yeah. it's slightly more accurate, you know, for, for better or for worse. It would be super but interesting we, to compare them. We, we should probably drink more whiskey, shouldn't we? Yeah, we should do. Let's do. Let's move on to some whiskey. Yeah, Adriana is, is 410. So, see, we found some that's shorter than you, Sarah. All right. Here's, I my, think here's, than here's my production value here, right? So, All the right. next whiskey we're going to try is our double barrel. Okay. So, this is a single grain style. And single grain whiskey originated in Ireland in 1832 with a guy called Anais Coffee. And Anais Coffee used to chase around moonshiners, putting distillers. He became fanatical in how they distilled. He thought it was extremely inefficient in terms of how they built the pot still cup points by, by smell, by taste, open flame. And he developed a new kind of still. He's very humble and shit like that. Sorry, Matt. Um, and then he. He named it after himself, called it the coffee still, C-O-F-F-E-Y. And this still has been popularized all over the world. Mm -hmm. The majority of your bourbons produced off coffee still. Your quintessential Japanese styles, Nika coffee grain, coffee malt, also produced off a of coffee still. Yeah. But this is the style that originated in Ireland in 1832. Never adopted, never utilized. And being a, a small craft distillery in Ireland, we geeked out about Irish heritage and distillation heritage for that matter. And we wanted to utilize the style that was overlooked. We used a standalone mash bill of malted barley and organic corn, distilled in a coffee still, and it's going to be uh, distilled into the mid 70s, aged in a first fill bourbon cask for three years and three months. And then we're going to transfer three of those into an Oloroso sherry cask from Montilla in Spain, where it's going to spend nine months of its life. We're going to bring it down to 42%. And then uh, uh, non chill filtered, and we're going, to, we're going to bottle from there. So, really, what we're looking for here, and what we're trying to do, and I'm just getting all my glasses set here. Um, what we're looking to do is something that's light and bright, but delivers so much more, that has complexity to it, that have, has a difference to it. Um, that people who you know don't know a lot about Irish whiskey, it can uh, it can appeal to them, but sort of get them asking questions. Why Why does this taste like this? What is different about this? Et cetera, et cetera. So we jokingly call this, this guy here a gateway Irish whiskey because it gets you off that green bottle onto proper Irish whiskey. Not I proper, totally agree with you. Proper Irish whiskey. <laughs> so funny you say that. That's actually the review coming out tomorrow. <laughs> This is terrible. I say nothing. I say nothing. There's no such thing as a bad Irish whiskey. This is what makes ours different. That's right. Oh, there is such a thing as a bad Irish whiskey, sir. We tasted one. It was oh no, there was that one from Total Wine last year that was some of their 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 brand. Oh my god, it was I don't know what it was, it was awful. Oh I, I, I could not possibly comment that there's no such thing as a bad Irish whiskey. This is what makes ours unique. Uh, right. We are a proud member of the Irish Whiskey Association. We're part of the rising tide and the renaissance of Irish whiskey. And this Matt, thing is about Irish whiskey. Hey Matt, does my li is it? This is one of the little bottles, and it says double barrel. For yeah, that's it. that's it. Yeah. All right, I picked right. Woohoo! Well, yeah, because the other two, the other two are gin and pink, the rose gin. So that's the, other, the rest of the big two ounces. Okay. Mm. Smells buttery, yeah. creamy. Uh -huh. so if, you know, if, you, if you want to roll this around the side of the glass, get the viscosity down the side. You know, this is a very thin and bright and light and lively whiskey. Sure, it barely, it barely has any legs at all. You know, it's a bit of a midget of a whiskey in terms of that respect. Um, nose is all bourbon cask. It's all that butterscotch, toffee, vanilla. Yeah. And then when we taste the whiskey, cheers, launch it to your health. It smells so good. Mm. Right. It jumps to the front. It's that extension of that bourbon cast. Mid palate completely changes, like a switch. Changes into that Olorosa sherry, that cherry, fig, tannin, tobacco, almost chewy and nutty element to it. Really wow. long finish. This is, a, this is a whiskey in conflict with itself. And what I mean by that is it, it, it doesn't know where it's at. It's one, two cans are fighting with each other in the middle of your palate. They're, they're having a bit of a scrap. 
chew it up again a bit in the front of your palate. It makes it feel like it's hotter than it actually is. Oh, it absolutely did. Mm -hmm. I was chewing that one for a good little while, and like he was saying, it explodes mid palate. It really does. And the fruit kind of takes over. I like that a lot. Right, right in the front, and then it just sort of mid palate completely changes. It's like a switch. Yeah, and then it has that sherry drying. It has that just mm -hmm. that oloroso the, sherry just dry. That dry finish. feel at the finish. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's completely in conflict with itself. It doesn't know what it is. Wild. You know, I like it. Both of them, both of them are fighting with each other. And what we love about this whiskey, uh, I, as I put my beer in the camera there, mm -hmm. uh, what we love about this whiskey is that you know people who think Irish whiskey is one way, and we'll probably get into it down later in the in the way, is they think it's light and sweet, right? They think it's light and sweet. Drank as a shot or whatever. This sits to that, but it doesn't really plant itself. It sits to that, but then it delivers more. So yeah. it gets people to say, oh, light and sweet. You like light and sweet? Here's that, and then more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's got a richness what, 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 to it. Well, why does it taste like that? What, what, what's different? Like, Sarah, do, do, yeah, 100%. So that's why we call it Gateway Irish Whiskey. <laughs> Well, and only at 42%, it drinks much hotter. Um, I would have probably called this 46, maybe 48. I appreciate um, it not at 40, though. So I appreciate that you, you added a couple points on. Yeah. Yeah, we're 42 on this, yeah. I enjoy right. it. There, it a lot. There's another $5 if Matt can pronounce the five. I can't pronounce that. Well, okay. What? Well, yeah. You can't so, that? No. I'm, I can pronounce uh, see, another see, word. See, th they made a mistake on this because it's La Feta Padre Summer Dit, right? Which means say, Happy St. Patrick's Day to you. Okay. But that's only if you're one to one. So they're not doing the, the oh, plural. No. So La Feta Padre Summer Div would be collectively. So if I'm speaking to more than one person, it'd be La Feta Padre Summer Div. Nice. Thanks. Ha ha. So wrong. I am Irishman. Maybe, uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I, I didn't mean to, to whatever. Anyway. Oh, no, no, no. It's okay. It's just his channel, it's his channel it's is named The Rock Gut Review, sir. So if he doesn't care, he, he we're, we're good. Ed's good, peeps. Okay. He's good, peeps. I, I, I spoke Irish before I spoke English. My, my parents were hippies and lived in the Gwelt of in Ireland. So <laughs> um, that's awesome. We need to go to Ireland. We really do. <laughs> Matt, what's my price point on this uh, single grain? You said single grain, right? Yeah, single grain. So single distillery grain whiskey. Grain whiskey you can be off multiple grains, which is actually crazy uh, in terms of the classification in, in, on the island of Ireland. But you're looking about between 30 and 35 bucks, so usually 29.99. If you are in the state of Texas, which I believe you are. Yes. Correct. Yeah, you're going to be looking at specs or goodies or what have you. Twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, I know Mirage has it. Total yeah. Wine as well have it. Twenty nine ninety nine. Yeah, if you go yeah, to Mirage, yeah. that though comes to carry all this stuff too. <laughs> well, oh, I tell you it. what, if you have an opportunity, instead of going to the man, please support a local liquor store. It might be a couple of bucks more expensive, but you're supporting someone's mortgage, someone's brick and mortar, and you know, yep. just. Uh, just please do that, you know. That's what, that, that's what got us through a couple of uh, bad times as the distillery was local people supporting us, celebrating us, and uh, anything you can do to support local, especially with the, with, with the bad situation that Texas has had with, with all that weather and all that. Yeah. Please support local yeah. business. Yep, that's, that's yeah. where we shop. Yes. I know that specifically Mirage has all of these. That's actually where... They uh, came from. So. And that's where we will go to get them. Yeah, that's where they came from. And the fact, the problem, the few stores around here that actually carries all of them. So Most stores only carry one or two. They carry all of them. And if, the, if, if your local store doesn't have it, they'll order it for you next mm. day delivery through our distributorship. Mm, well. So, and then you'd be giving your business to local, you know. Yeah, perfect. Have, have them order it. That's definitely a yeah, big believer in that. Big believer in that. Exactly. So, what, what, let me ask you, what, what do you think of that whiskey? It's good. I That's like it for uh, your your uh, basic jump into Irish whiskey. This mm -hmm. is very nice. Like you said, I think significantly better than some of the other ones. Um, I like the fact that it's not a lot of times you find with blends you get um, a lot of grain and metallic on it, and you don't yeah. seem to get that at all on this. It's, it's not there. Really nice. and, and I More find that on almost all coffee still whiskeys I have. It's not here. 
on the and it's not there. here. And I think that's what I like most about it. And just tell me that you're only going to charge me twenty nine ninety nine for it. I'm I'm happy with that because it's to me this is one of my favorite representations of a column still because I'm not getting that graininess. I'm not getting right. that, like that shiny metallic metal licking a licking a flask kind of flavor um, added to the whiskey, which is basically all I taste in in the big dog. That's dip. why we usually reach for pot still. Right. You don't get right. that. But I, I love I love the different the flavor journey yeah. on this. Yeah. It, well, and the richness it, and the complex complexity too. Right. It, for being again a thirty dollar whiskey, I'm 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 super it's happy. Very with that. rich. Yeah, you know, uh, I I really appreciate that, and I think this this is a whiskey that sits in a place and it's light and bright with. Um, oh, Jesus! What's someone saying? Cheers, uh, you got cheers with your Crusaders, and I'll raise a big. It's beautiful, a Canadian <laughs> launch it to St. Kevin, the beautiful spirits, Ochin Barrel, age for age. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> well, I suppose, Sarah, you mentioned when you talked about, you talked about pot still whiskey. We're going to move on to a different right. whiskey, a different whiskey altogether, and that's our Glendalough pot still. And pot still whiskey is a style that can only be made on the island of Ireland. Geographically protected. It is the defining point in Irish whiskey. And like everything I say, it comes back to the English and it goes back to taxation. So in the 1700s, I'll do a brief, uh, a brief history thing here, right? The 1700s, Irish single malts, no smoke, no pee, were king. So the English kept on trying to put taxation measures onto these distilleries and uh, the Irish distillers kept on evading the tax. Barrels would go missing. They'd underreport shit. Think, sorry again, Matt. All of that type of stuff would happen. So in 1785, they put a tax on the only component used within Irish single malts, malted barley. So this tax led distillers to start to innovate and start to look at different grains that they could utilize in the mash bill while trying to keep what they wanted. And they started to use unmalted barley or green barley within the mash. They distilled it, aged it. They said it was pure thing that ever came from the pot still. They call it pure pot still whiskey, mm -hmm. single pot still whiskey, or more recently, Irish pot still whiskey. And the addition of that unmalted barley within the mash, it's renowned for two core mm -hmm. qualities. It's renowned for texture. It's big, oily, robust, chewy. There, it's often said that there's eating and drinking in a glass of pot still whiskey. Secondly, mm. it is renowned for having this texture, this sort of tangy spice to it called a pot still characteristic. That is the whiskey that's in this bottle, right? It is a pot still whiskey. It's two thirds unmalted, one third malted, triple distilled, non chill filtered, all the rest. That's only where the story starts. This is a single cask offer. And mm. the casks. We actually make the cast out of trees that we take down in the Wicklow Mountains where we're from. Oh, for every tree we take down, we plant seven more. We took down 14 trees for this project that gave us 50 casks. If you look on the front of every one of your bottles there, you're going to see what cask, can everyone see that? What tree it's from, what cask it's from, what batch it is, what bottle it is, all the rest. Awesome. You can actually link that into a website here. That's cool. And it's going to show you how we chose that tree, how we brought it down, half the quarter to save it, how we built the barrel, how we toasted the inside, how we filled it with whiskey, and how we took it out. The trees, the breed of oak itself is a very rare native breed of Irish oak called their Galda. And their Galda used of 90% coverage on the island of Ireland, now 0.02%. This is true, again, the English. They cleared it out for shipbuilding, uh, in about 1400s, 1300s, and then an invasive species came in, they did it through an unsustainable method. So we're very lucky where we are, that our own indigenous oak grows in the Wicklow Mountains. And amazing. our own indigenous oak is very, very fast grown, has very thirsty wood, has thinner cell walls, that's how, how, how quick it grows, has higher, uh, it's um, broader in terms of ring width, which is really hard to say after you've had a couple of whiskeys. Um, <laughs> but long story short, is it answers like uh, sticky toffee pudding, black tree gold, molasses quality on one side, 
And then on the other side, it has this like earthy, tannin, herbaceous quality to mm -hmm. it. So for us, it's a matter of uh, self-determination that, you know, Irish whiskey should be aged in Irish oak. Why are we going all over the world? And we do go all over mm -hmm. the world looking for different casks. But why should we do that? You know, if you look at this uh, distillery, you know, we want to be almost like a like pre-industrial revolution style Irish whiskey distillery. You know, and it's the first time in nearly 300 years that this breed of oak has been has been used within Irish whiskey. And, you know, it's a matter of self-determination in terms of what should the flavor profile be of Irish whiskey. And why aren't we using what's quintessentially terroir-driven flavor profile? And that's really what, what this is for us. And it's, uh, we've been working on this for six years, and uh, we're really proud of how this came out. And yeah. I want you to roll that around the side of the glass because it is thick, it is viscous, it is huge. Yeah. Yeah. And and I and I love the transparency that you have going on here with um, these products. Yeah, and it's just like the only other product I've ever had is from Middleton that's in the Irish. That's, it's, that's the, uh, their Gaelic. Right. Yeah. And that's quite a bit older than this. Older and proof. way more expensive than this. Wait, yeah. What's the price point on this? Uh, we've got 55, 60 bucks, something like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I, I, I love all the folks at, Mid at Middleton and uh, IDL and Perra Car. That's their Gallic. Uh, it's not their Galda. So the, 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 this is in the, the Quercus Rovor family. Uh, we're there in the Quercus Petra family. Mm. Okay. So, 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 so this is a different breed of oak. Mm. Ah. Breed of oak. Interesting. Interesting. So, the, so the, to my knowledge, there's two breeds of oak that are okay. indigenous to Ireland. Okay. Uh, they are Gallic and they are Galda. And this is their Galda. Interesting. Okay, cool. Now, now we learned that too. For okay. Real. Um. So, is this, so? Let's see. Donnie wanted to know if this is is this triple distilled or just, it just does it have anything to do at all? How many okay. times have you run through the pot still? With, uh, oh yeah, oh, no, I, um, yeah, If I didn't mention, I do apologize. It, it is triple distilled. It is triple distilled. So, okay. so this is going to be a mash bill, just flat out specs, right? Okay. So two thirds unmalted, one third malted, triple distilled, aged three years first of all bourbon, one year of virgin Irish oak, one yeah. of fifty casts from fourteen trees. Yeah, this this tree I have is a uh, eleven A, batch one, bottle number ninety six, cast two. And it's forty three percent. That's only forty three percent. I figured it was higher than that. It tastes it higher. It tastes higher yeah. again. This is really another does. one that I thought it was like ninety two. Is it because we uh -huh. started with the protein with that big one? Mm. No, yeah, we, know, we, 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 we started at eleven. Well, we started at eleven. We're not going down from eleven, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I don't yeah. know. Uh, all of these have tasted big and rich. It's the richness that that viscous that you get from it that. You don't get from a lot of um, younger no. You Irish usually get whiskeys. much older. It, it, they've got to be like the old old. No, Irish I'm not whiskey. picking up. Uh, um, what the, yeah, the, the yeah. tropical fruit notes yet? No, right. but we haven't gotten that. into anything older yet. But uh, no. Donald, the green, huh? Yeah, Donald says the best Irish of the new pastels, and I'd agree with him. Of all the new pastels that are on the market, this is the best one by far. Uh, Sam says they're all the worst to get. Which is the harder that, one? Good question, Sam. Good question. That, yeah, for that that's, that's, face that's an interesting question. In, in, in terms of um, where we're at with this, we okay. feel that Dargalda is on a chemical structure, and we work with this great dude, Paddy Purser, uh, who runs the forestry. And we uh, will actually, and this is my long answer, and I will answer the question, but we will send these staves to Spain to dry age for a year in the sun. We'll actually toast them using leftover oak. And that, you know, all of these things that we do to actually to, to build out these casts is to bring out that flavor profile. And we find that it is initially very hard wood, but when you look at it on a on a, like a structural interaction to the whiskey mm -hmm. level. It has thinner cell walls, higher, you know, um, wider um, ring width, and you get this deeper interaction. So we'll put this in the cask, 
and nine percent is gone like within six months nine percent of the whiskey that's gone is it, it, like wow like, like yeah within six months so okay. it initially seems very hard like for just average like looking at us and thinking because like, we, we do some work with a, a different breed of oak that we might talk about in a little bit that's very very soft and feels very soft but um yeah on a chemical level it's actually you get this great interaction to it now the, the the other breed of oak that was mentioned there by your 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 uh, comments person um i don't know it's the honest answer we we, okay. we like we, like we, you know, i I'll, i won't ever try to bullshit or you know pretend an answer or whatever like that <laughs> um because it just come back in you at some stage no but like you know where we're getting to with the distillery is we want to do everything within 10 miles we want to be a pre-industrial revolution style distillery where all the grains are are, are, are literally within 10 miles where we can cultivate yeast strains out of the air, where we can literally have calves built from, from the forest that are there. So we can essentially have this almost terroir-driven flavor profile to our whiskies that actually have a sense of identity and difference to them. Yeah, well, this so is, far so good, sir. Yeah, it's good. I like this. I've enjoyed everything I've tasted so far. I like the label too that you can, I don't know if you guys can see, the, the label actually has the oak tree on it. Can you make me big roll? Yeah. You guys can see that's the actual oh, the intersection. Tree. That's really cool, and, and it's and you can feel it too. It's raised out here on the on the on the logo. Did I think it's a really nice label. That's cool. Um, and here I tell you what, people are gonna kill me if I don't say this. So we have a promotion going on right now with this. So for every tree of our our Irish oak that we take down, we actually plant seven more. So the way we actually choose our trees, if we do this in a thing that I always mispronounce. But it's continuous coverage forest management systems, right? So essentially what that means is we go into the forest, we pick the older trees that are more at risk of coming down, and we will take two or three together, we'll do it in a clearing, and then we'll plant trees in the area so mm -hmm. that the sunlight can actually hit the trees and the, the saplings that we plant can actually grow up. You know, so a big thing with Irish oak is there's an invasive beech tree that came in and grows substantially faster than oak trees. So it grow up, then, you know, you get no, no coverage and all that. But here, I digress. What we're doing for St. Patrick's Day is additionally to the every every bottle, or say every tree we plant, for every bottle of the pot still that's purchased in St. Patrick's Day, uh, we have this nice necker on it. We'll plant an additional tree in the Wicklow Mountains with your name on it. As in, we'll give you a certificate. We'll go into the woods. We'll plant it. We're going to show you a picture of that tree. When we plant it, we'll show you six months down the line, year down the line, what have you. And if you get yourself over to Ireland, plane tickets on you, but we'll show you your tree. No, I buy a bottle. Heard that. We need to. We need to go see a tree. That's. We need to go to Ireland anyway. So. Hey, we, I, I, right. We have to go anyway. I mean, yeah. Like, I need another reason, but That's I'll have my cool. I want to go see a tree. That sounds awesome. All right. So I do want to mention. Oh. So Whiskey Nose, which, uh, by the way, is a new channel on YouTube. If you guys can check out Whiskey Nose. That also be great. Check them out, please. And he says he knows about the tradition for quite some. Thanks you for your efforts. So That's awesome. Well, thank and you. Then, thank you. Yeah. Cohen wants to know. Oh, sorry. Uh, have the Bizanara selections been discontinued? I guess we'll, we'll get to that here in a little bit, but I'll let you answer that mm -hmm. question. We can go get there. Uh, Adriana. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I, I, I'll go back before I go forward. So thank you very much for um, acknowledging our efforts and the kind words in terms of the, the oak thing. And we, we actually just got um, a, a very uh, prestigious award recently. We got an Icon of Whiskey Award for being the most sustainable distillery in Ireland. And to this date, we have, tra we have planted 1,200 indigenous oak trees. Nice. Like and, that's trees. and we've only we've only taken down about 100. So that's, wow. so we're putting up 12x, 12x on what we're taking down. So, that, so, so that's not bad. I'm I'm with Adriana. I want to go hug my tree. Yeah, I mean, I want to go. I want to stop there and stop at Lafroy. Look at my my little piece of leased land, and then go hug a tree in Ireland. I think that's like a good plan. Grant I purchased some bottles. There you go. We bought some bottles here. tonight. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, you sold you sold me, man. 
Yeah, I agree. Like, like Brian says, it's better than a – LaFroy just gives you a foot of, of you know, rent. You, here gets a freaking tree. I love that, yeah. Like the pasta, we didn't really even talk about the taste of notes to it. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it. I'll post uh, it. So maybe, we should, maybe, maybe we should, maybe we shouldn't, but like black treacle, molasses, maple syrup. On the nose, I get like this fancy orange marmalade with that maple quality, some leather and clove coming in. On mm -hmm. the back end, I get all of that leafy, Earthy, notes, almost yeah. herbaceous quality to it, Grassy. Which, is, um, which is absolutely phenomenal. I'm going to take this out of the way because I know it's probably a little bit obnoxious. Hopefully, you can you can still hear me. I mean, mm. we've got cats in our shot, so your mic's nothing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. there's used to screaming children, animals going back and forth. It's it's whatever. Well, I, I, I have a little puppy here. I, I I took her out maybe about two hours ago, so she's dead to the horses. Little <laughs> 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 All right. So Will Henderson wants to know how old does a tree need to be before you guys harvest it? About uh, over 100 years. It's supposed to be like 120, 130 is typically where we go. And we want to look at these trees that are more at risk of falling down. That's and impressive. that are, you know, and, and it's sort of like a, um, Paddy Purser is our dude. And, and he sort of leads the things in like, you know, if you're going to develop up a clearing, you take this tree and this tree and this tree down, because. and all these are older trees. So you you generally take you want to take older trees, but someone it's 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 in terms of the position of where they are and okay. like sort of why they are. So there, there's a couple of different factors within that. Um, like so, you might take a younger tree, but that's a prime position to be able to take the two older trees that are next to it. Right. So you might. Aaron, and you put like fucking 20 trees. Okay. Excuse me, language. Uh, 20 trees. Stop there. that. <laughs> he has to apologize to his mother every time. Let's just do a broad. Sorry, mom. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't watch any. She doesn't watch any. There you go. No, yeah. she's never going to see this. It's fine. Yeah. My, my parents don't even drink. Yeah, I don't what? know how I came about, but <laughs> yeah. Teetotalers and all that. I, I enjoy this one a lot. I like this one a you lot. You have to add this. So, that's an interesting question. He goes, is that optimal, really, since the trees aren't in the best condition to make stage, or does it really not make any difference? And Bubble Bath Bourbon is another channel. If you guys haven't checked out his channel, please check out his as well. He does reviews from the best of It's very interesting. It, it, I was say, is it optimal that it's older trees? Um, okay. You know, are, are, are you talking about density? I don't think the age affects density of oak. Okay. So I, I, I don't really feel that's you know, we're probably not there in terms of, you know, is an elderly tree going to be less dense or more dense than a young tree? I, I think I know like a super young tree is going to be more tighter than an older tree that's going to be mm -hmm. more open in terms of like a chemical uh, breakdown in terms of density. In so, France, I know oh, they oh. use older older French oak. Uh, they, they chop down 120, 130 year old plus trees uh, to make French oak barrels. So Limousine oak, yeah. Yeah, that yeah, I mean, seems like the right plant, age. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I, I think it's a that it's a degree. And, you know, I, I wouldn't pretend to be an expert on it because I there's no experts on it. Um, you know, if you look at a young tree that's younger than fifty years, it still has a lot of growing in it. So it's yeah, you know, that, that there's an element to it. But like, if you ask me what's the difference between a 100-year-old tree and a 200-year-old tree, I wouldn't be able to tell you. But I would be able to tell you that a 50-year-old tree is, is going to be tighter than a 100-year-old tree. Yeah. On a chemical breakdown, you know, literally, what is the, the, the density level of the oak? You know, so, but I think more so, it's more about taking down trees that are at risk of falling down anyway and taking yeah. down looking at that or looking at areas that you know we can plant a load of trees here so i think and there's a couple of different aspects within what what actually makes the decision to do so okay makes sense yeah. all right we got a few questions what travis's question is he's he's looking for a hat like the one you have on, on, on your website. how does he get a hat um if he buys a bottle and sends me the receipt. Uh, I will send him a uh, send him a hat. There you go, Travis. There you go, Travis. So, Travis, 
And my Instagram is, so this is going to be a bit uh, embarrassing. My Instagram is double measure donal. At double measure donal. So if you send me a receipt, uh, I will send you a hat. And send me your address as well, so we're not going up and back. But yeah, I'm I'm information. I'll send you a hat. Send you one of these guys. I have about 10 of them. <laughs> we'll put that information in um, the uh, information section uh, after the fact. Right, Matt? Yeah. Yeah, Go we can do that. that in the description. Or just send me an email, Travis, when you buy it. I'll okay. send an email. That'll be even okay. easier. How um, has the takeover from Mark Anthony Brands worked out for, for Glenn Lock? Okay, so, so, so that, that, that's a big question, right? So about a year and a half ago, um, the distillery was purchased by Mark Anthony Brands. So I'm one of the founders of the distillery, uh, as is my cousin, Gary McLaughlin, um, Kevin Keenan, uh, Kevin Keenan, Brian Fagan, and Barry Gallagher. And uh, yeah, so initially they took a minority stake. We've been slogging for a long time. They uh -huh. were stake, they built an importer, and then they they purchased out um, the distillery in terms of just have everything in house. So okay. how has that how has that worked out? It's it's been great, you know, to be able to tap into the great scale of operation that they sure. have and the, the distribution network and all that. It gives the ability of the brand's potential to be able to go and shine, you know, like. We all talk about this. And you, are, you, you guys have many people on, and we all wax lyrically about whiskey and what's this and what's that. But it, it, it it's a look here. I hope my mom isn't listening. It's a fucking business. Like, <laughs> and uh, I saw, I saw case one of this. I self distributed this. I ran export. I ran wow. import. I've done a variety of different tasks with this, and. Um, you get to a stage where you need to get to the, you, you you owe it to the brand to get it to the next level, and I agree. Uh, you know, and, and sometimes you just have you have to partner with people that are yeah. able to get you there. You know, we could be the most obscure brand in the world and sell two hundred cases a year, and you know we'd have five fans. I wouldn't be talking to you now if we didn't have a reach and we weren't able to if we were able to be able to even be in Texas. Are places like this, which, which are huge whiskey markets. Yeah, because so, like, we got excited about you guys way before every guys were in market here for us. I think we saw some at the Whiskey Vault like, what, two, three years ago. And I was like, been really excited. I was like, but when the hell are we going to get? We finally came here, what, maybe a year and a half ago or so? And yeah, so yeah. freaking excited and so damn good. Um, so the next question is, so actually, can you talk about St. Kevin, who's on the bottle? Because uh, Donnie would like to know about him. Being if he's a substitute or a modern Christian symbol, because we never really touched on who St. Kevin is. Oh, I, I, I usually sort of end with it, but I'll, I'll tell oh, you what, okay. that this Bear Grylls looking character in the front of every one of our bottles. So that's St. Kevin. So mm -hmm. St. Kevin was born into nobility in Ireland in the sixth century. So he's supposed to be next king of this big area around Dublin called Leinster. Born into royalty and all that, but he doesn't want to go this path in front of him. He wants to uh, make his own way in the world. So he goes over the Wicklow Mountains where he's doing a bit of soul searching. He gets to one point at the top of the mountains where he looks down, sees two pristine lakes and said that he's drawn to them. The second he went in between those two lakes, he became religious because of the strength of character, his charisma and his preaching, everyone in the locality wanted to live around that holy man. And to this day, between those two lakes is a 6th century monastic settlement called Glen de Lock. The story that's depicted in the front of every one of our bottles is St. Kevin and the Blackbird. So St. Kevin used to stand up to his waist in ice cold water in the lower lake with his hands upstretched towards the heavens because monks were into that type of shit at the time. But it's said that he was very harmonious, very at one with nature. A blackbird flew down and landed into his hand. The blackbird was so at peace that she laid her eggs. And St. Kevin stood like that for two weeks until the hashings hatched as they're known to do and flew off. So we put that on our bottles twofold. One is a nod back to this birthplace of distillation. First written record of distillation for consumption, that is, is 584 AD, St. Rudolph of Lopra. So I was born and raised eight miles from here, and it's, it's monastic settlements like that where it all started. Every bottle in your back bar and every bottle in the bar all has its roots in what was first distilled as pochine, that was first distilled precursor to whiskey. 
Secondly, it's this dude who um, did something meaningful, something worthwhile, made his mark in the world. You know, 1,400 years later, people still talk about him. Like over a million people a year go to visit what he built. Wow. Um, that's really something Impressive. that, you know, that we want, that we admire. And so that's what we want to do. And you talk about making the distillery. You have this guy who has like millions of people seeing this, seeing what he built 1,400 years later. And we like a fraction of that. We want to make remarkably different Irish whiskeys and wild terroir gins in the region where we're from, which is known as the of Ireland. So, so that's what we're about. That's why we put it on the bottles. That's awesome. That's freaking awesome. That's fantastic. So what is uh, St. Kevin the patron saint of? Wilderness. Wilderness. Oh, okay. that makes sense. Yeah. That's very cool. Patron saint of wilderness. Are you, are you often going to ask, is that Christ the Redeemer? Or is that uh, St. Francis? Is another one that we get. Okay. Yeah, well. that makes sense, yeah. Yeah, we're, we're still make sense. Yeah. And, uh, sort That's of. I suppose he's sort of St. francis -y. But like back in the day, it was like Christianity wasn't a big thing within Ireland. It was half rude, half Christianity. Sure. You know, we used, you used to have, and you have some, a lot of old Celtic traditions that sort of were wrapped up with Christianity uh, at a while. <laughs> Two weeks down to still not have a whiskey. Will of Steel. <laughs> I think he might have had a drop of whiskey. He was a bit of a. Um, Bit of a hermit, you know. He built out the civilization. He kept on going away from it. Um, Seamus Heaney writes about him. Saint Kevin and the Blackbird. Seamus Heaney has a great poem about him. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Very nice. I, I'll have to bring these to Easter. My uncle Kevin's coming. He'll be thrilled to try this. <laughs> he loves whiskey, so he'll be thrilled. That's very cool, though. Like, look, your patron saint is uh, here with, with your with your own Irish whiskey on it, so that's awesome. Well, I tell you what, my, my local uh, like primary school, which we call elementary school, is called St. Kevin's in, in like, like, the small town where I'm from. And um, like, it was all that. Like, we we used to go there for like we'd be dragged there for like uh, archaeology class, or, mm. like like I can't even fucking remember the name of it. Sorry again, Matt. Um, but yeah, you know, it was like you, you overlook this stuff when you're growing up, and then when you're growing up, you you sort of uh, you slow down on it. You know what I mean? Yeah, makes sense. I understand. It's the way it goes. I also like that the canister. Of this also feels like a tree. It's also really. It looks cool. like it. Um, I, I I love all this nerdy ass shit with with bottles and canisters. I think this is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Feels, it yeah, it oh, looks wow. like a tree. It, looks, it feels like a tree. It it's looks really like it. cool. I like it. it is, Matt's yeah. really into artwork and keeps basically every single part yeah, of the I have bottle. bottle. I really love the artwork of bottles and just I geek out on all that crap and the history of them. Yeah, like, you know, if you look at our own indigenous oak, we've been distilled in Ireland since the 6th century, right? Yeah. In the, in the late 16th century, we started to use rare prize casks, which is Sherry, Madeira, and Port. After Prohibition, we started to use bourbon casks. But, but prior to the late 1600s, we started to use our, we were using our own indigenous oak, use of 90% covered mm -hmm. in the island of Ireland. So this was used in early, early, early forms of whiskey distillation and not quite aging, but more story. Mm -hmm. So this flavor profile of like these like richer, sweeter notes of like sticky toffee, molasses, all of that, and then just like leafy tannin note, that flavor was alive within Irish whiskey in the 15 and early 1600s and went by the fucking waste side. And it went by the wayside, and then all these outside forces always dictated what Irish whiskey should taste like. Rare price cat. We're going to talk a bit about that in the, in the upcoming whiskeys, but it's all the self determination aspect of. Irish whiskey should have an influence of Ireland and Irish oak to it. Absolutely. Uh, specifically, this style, which is called pot still whiskey, which is a style that can only be made on the actual island of Ireland. Plus, it fucks over the British, so that's always a good thing. And I appreciate it. Always goes back to the British and taxation, Matt. Right. Daily, we, we, like, if there's ever a question that anyone has, right? That, that, that it's viewing now or it's viewing in the future. Most likely, the answer is going to be taxation or the English. 
Yes, <laughs> totally true. And usually it's both, unfortunately. They, they both suck. Ooh, oh, that sounds awesome. That's a great question. Will we be seeing the Grand Crew, the Calvados, or the Triple Barrel on this side of the Atlantic? <laughs> great question, Donald. You mean like this bottle? Ooh, yeah, like that. This bottle or... I guess it answers that question. So the next question is, when does it come to market? <laughs> so these are all single casts. Okay. okay. Uh, wow. We sell them as single casts to retailers. Very nice. We've, we've, been, we've been doing it in uh, Europe for a while. So the likes of um, you know some of the better uh, retailers um, in mainland Europe and like Germany and France and stuff like that. They'll okay. buy casts from us. And then like Ali at the Cat Whiskey Shop will be buy, buy casts from us. So we are going to be selling the Triple Barrel, which is Madeira finish, uh, the Calvados and the Burgundy Grand Cru to mm -hmm. retailers, um, specifically in more, more independent retailers versus the, 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 the Total Wines that we're having here. Going to get in trouble if anyone from Total Wines is watching this. <laughs> um, okay, yeah, don't worry. So, we shit on them all, all, all the time. It's fine. Um, so, so yeah, no, uh, to answer your, your question, and I, I usually go off in the caveat before I answer the actual question. Uh, yes, they are coming over. Uh, COVID sort of messed over our timelines a little bit. Um, but probably by uh, OND, as we call it, October, November, December, uh, they will be in market and they'll be in multiple different states, Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, South, California, and Chicago. So, He's in Canada, so is that included in? Uh, you might have to have the border. Um, do we sell to Canada? I think we have them listed. No, we can't sell them to Canada because the LCBO um, aren't going to do that. But you could buy from the US. And um, Michigan, Michigan sits next to Canada, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> you can. You, I'm asking you. Sit oh, here in Chicago, not too far away from it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, it does. You were correct. Yeah. Yeah. Go to, go to Sault Ste. Marie and f throw it across the bridge. It'll be fine. I'll, I'll have someone meet you at the border. How about that? Perfect. It's a good plan. Yeah. No, no, All right. No, no, like the cross border negotiation tactics. Here you exactly. go. Put that, the, put that in the back of your car. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm having like flashbacks to go across the border when I was growing up in Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> Less AK 47s, if you ask me. But anyway. Yeah, those are beautiful guns. I do enjoy. They're quite fun to shoot. All right. Uh, yeah, not when it's British. Not when they're pointed at you, though. Not when they're British. Not when they're British soldiers, but whatever. Yeah, when, when, they're, when they're British the soldiers, point. it's already bad enough. But yeah, you don't need them pointed at you. But they're fun to shoot on your own, but not pointed at you. Uh, what is your favorite? They want, whiskey knows wants to know behind you. What's your favorite whiskey behind you? Um, of, of ours? Yeah. Of our whiskeys? It's actually going to be the next whiskey we're trying. Oh, well, perfect. Um, which is a, a very convenient caveat right there. So I, I, we have a load of whiskeys on my like, so the Zoom backdrop or what have you like that. Uh, these are all empty here, um, but my favorite whiskey was ever, ever, ever done. Uh, I love talking about it, and um, it, it, it's a porter cask aged single malt, right? And it's it's just amazing, right? So in the early 1700s, right? And I'll, I'll have to look up. Uh, I might have to look up notes on this. I think I'll remember it, actually. Okay. In 1742, uh, a brewery in Ireland brought pale malt, dark malt, and chocolate malt together, and they okay. developed a style of beer called a plain porter or a Dublin porter. Okay. Uh, from 1742 to 1974, that's what Guinness was. Guinness was a plain porter. You'd see this in the Dublin or something, it's a drop of the plain. And this was a flavor profile that made its way all around the world, every corner of the world. Guinness, you, you, go, you go to Africa, you go to Fiji, and rugby players drink Guinness, mm -hmm. mix it with protein and put eggs in it and all that. Guinness is just <laughs> it's it. Um, and while, while at the same time, because it's prior to pot still whiskey becoming a thing, Irish single malts were dominated, uh, dominating the world, right? 
So mm. Irish whiskey was seen as unsmoked, unpeated. Irish single malt with the strong malt backbone to them. You know the two things the Irish gave to the Scottish? We taught them how to make whiskey and they ruined it. After that, we gave them kills and forgot to tell them it was a joke. <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the stupid joke that we have against Scotch whiskey because we have... We had the famous whiskey, right? Because yeah. these big distilleries in Ireland, they use coal for the molten. They didn't use a turf or a peat. Mm -hmm. So they have to have molten floors. So these smoke would not infect the barley, if you will. So Irish whiskey was seen as king. But Irish mm -hmm. whiskey used to have this big, strong malt backbone to it. So did the plain porter. It has this rich, you know, the, and that's why I like to get this extra step because it has more of that like rich, dark coffee molasses quality uh like cocoa like dark dark fucking chocolate type of thing mm -hmm. this whiskey is unapologetically one-dimensional it is that it's a double still irish single malt okay. right we work with an ex-brewer from guinness a guy called mm -hmm. william harvey and william harvey is an absolute legend he looks like a, a dude out of breaking bad he wears the old, those, those sort of mad hats and all that. Awesome. Um, old, old rockabilly type of dude from the 70s. And uh, he used to go around buying grains all over the world for pennies and the dollar type of thing. And he got bored out of his mind. And then he, started, he set up a tiny brewery in the Black Pits in Dublin. Mm. And uh, he resurrected that old style of beer right. that Guinness originally was, that plain porter. But I invite you to look up a drop of the plain it dropped the plane by the Dubliners. There's a, there's a drop of the plane is your only man. It's a, it, if I can d d digress here, but it's from a plan of buying story. Um, but while that style of whiskey, that Irish single malt, that was like malt, fucking bum, eating and drinking in it, heavy, <laughs> back onto it, that plain porter had a lot of similar aspects to it, right? Mm -hmm. And it's one area in Dublin called the Black Pits had both of those. So he mm. called it the Black Pits Porter. Okay. And we gave him our ex whiskey casks. We took out the seven year old single malt, ex bourbon, bourbon, ex bourbon cask, filled with Irish single malt. Seven years later, take the whiskey out, give him the cask. He aged his beer in it for a year. Dang. And nice. then, we, then we emptied the beer out, and he sold that. We took the cask back. We finished the whiskey for a year. In it. Nice. That's it's awesome. Like, this is not like a flash type of Asian type of less le le mastery young whiskey. Let's take the inherent flavor profile and double down on it. And, um, this is my favorite whiskey I've ever done. That's completely, completely sold out. Can't get it. Blah, blah, blah. Yes, it's a good thing we've got one, though. Did Thank you get you. that at William? Uh, like, like a year ago. Mm. Fuck. Just, Sarah, just, I love that. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> just on the nose, I can tell that I'm going to want you it. never know. Ask William if he's got any hidden in the back. You never know. Perfect. Sometimes he holds stuff back. He might have some. Give him uh, a call. I'll be visiting him tomorrow. <laughs> You're like, give me all the Glendalock. He'll be fine. Uh, so, what's it? Somebody had a question about asking. Oh, it was a bubble bath. Do you, are you guys going to possibly make any peated expressions at all? Ooh. That... I cannot, I, I cannot disclose that information, but it would seem <laughs> perfect. Possible. That means yes. Good enough for me. <laughs> that means it's already made. <laughs> it means it's yeah. in a barrel it's somewhere. Might, might be in the cask. He said. He said fourteen times now that Irish whiskey is not peated like the damn Scots. It's, no, it's, it's in a barrel Four, somewhere. Times, it's more of a regional thing, but uh, yeah, we have been uh, sort of fucking around with some of that. Nice. And, uh, yeah, awesome. no, it, it's interesting. It's a weird quirk in history because it's like anything within Irish whiskey. There's no definitives. There's always mm -hmm. uh, sort of outside sure. things. All right. So I, I'm it? loving the nose on this. Yeah. Isn't it yeah, beautiful? Yeah, it's cool. Isn't it, I said like that. Uh, do you have that chocolate, like Terry's chocolate orange? Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it really does. Orange, like orange zest to it. And like deep cocoa, dark, dark, dark chocolate. Creamy chocolate. And yeah, like really this freaky. is seven years old, but it's actually uh, it's actually closer to eight. And seven years has a, a, a thing in Irish whiskey because there's a certain uh -huh. brand that used to say around the world, not a drop sold until it was seven years old. Mm. Oh. That used to be a big thing. That's seven is a very 
important year for Irish whiskey. Also, uh, Glendalough itself is known as the city mm. of the seven churches. The seven churches. Wow. There. Okay. So if you look at the front of this bottle here and the front of the, your package in there, you'll see seven crosses on it. Oh, yeah, sure do. That's cool. So that's actually a map superimposed on the front. So that's actually, if that's you go cool. back to scale, that's where all the churches are. That's in awesome. The, in Glendalough. That's so cool. So we're all, we're all about a bit of story, a bit of story. Yeah. Yeah, like and as a good Catholic, we're excited to see that. So that's good. As a long story, Catholic, I'm excited to see it all the same. Long <laughs> story short with Travis, uh, he can't he can't buy it in his state. He can't get it on either of the websites. That's cool. So he's going to have to figure out something else. Uh, Travis, buddy, I'm going to make yeah, it. Yeah, Travis, just message me. I'll send you a bottle and a, 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 and a hat. And uh, we'll, we'll call it a day from there. And if, if anyone from FedEx asks, it's a, it's a cigarine with olive oil in it. That's right. That's right. Okay, well, uh, uh, Travis, in all seriousness, if you can uh, get a hold of me, uh, on Instagram, I'll be going to FedEx next week after St. Patrick's Day. Double measure Donal and just, just include your address and your full name, and I, I, I'll sort it out and I'll look after you. Oh, I, you I, I like to call them the uh... Whiskey Fairies. Yes. Yes, there's good people there at FedEx. <laughs> they do enjoy the packages. And I like to ship snow globes. Yes. That's right. Snow globes. I like that. I say collectible figurines. Yeah. Uh, there you go. I, I, I have a lady here at my local FedEx, and she, she's like, oh, Donald, you again, more collectible figurines. She gave me a <laughs> wink. I'm like, no problem. I, I, sorted out where, I sorted her out with a bottle of gin and, and some tonic uh, <laughs> for about, for about two years ago. We have an understanding, you know what I mean? Buying off the FedEx <laughs> lady. <laughs> no, no, no. There, no. There, 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 there's nothing going on. Just she's giving me a friend. We have to it out that we have an understanding. You know, she doesn't ask what it is, and I don't tell her what it is, you know, and that's sort of where we go with it. That's, you know? that's kind of how it is where we go to drop off our stuff. They didn't even ask. No, they don't ask. It's great. They, I'm sure they don't care either. They have better things to do. Mm -hmm. uh, right. any, is there anything explosive or breakable? No, we're good to go. Donald, we'll get to that, Donald, the gin at the end, if that works for you guys, but well, that we can do the gin. That's fine. I actually, I, I'm looking forward to tasting the gin. I tasted it already, and I really enjoyed the heck out of it. Uh, I knew it wasn't uh, poteen, but you know, <laughs> it, it, I tasted it. it was beautiful. So I'm actually looking forward to getting back to that one. I, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. Always, you know, it's, it's going to be an expensive trip to Mirage. I, I I'm enjoying your cat behind your left sh uh, shoulder, Sarah. That's hairy. That is. Like just in it, wants to be in it. Say, hey, what's going on? How are you? I want to be in the show. Yeah, oh he's waiting god. for the bacon. Oh my god! Yeah. Hi, buddy. What's the name of your cat? That's Harry. That's Harry. I have a cat here called Ham Sandwich. Nice. That's <laughs> awesome. That's, <laughs> that's great. It's, so <laughs> it's my, my wife's cat from before we were together. But, oh my gosh, it's awesome. Yeah, it's called Ham Sandwich. And then I have a puppy over here called Jolene or Jojo. And uh, she's about 85 pounds. And she, she, you got to explain why sandwich. is the cat's name Ham Sandwich? You got, you got to explain. She, that. I just think she likes ham sandwiches. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I don't know. I, I'd probably have to. And my phone binging here next to me. I don't want to put her on the line. I think she's probably in bed, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I know she's in bed. I mean, you know, I've been, been on calls all day. But uh, yeah, I think she just likes ham sandwiches. <laughs> all right, that works. Uh, yeah, so the next round of animals we have, they're going to be named after foods. There Her you go. go. All my cats are Harry Potter cats. They all oh. have Harry Potter names. So the next round. <laughs> See, and all my animals as a kid were named after alcohol. We have. Yeah. We had vodka, scotch. What else do we have? You had a cat called vodka? Yeah, yeah. We used to have a. Uh, we had rats. We named all the rats after different different alcohols. We had one with Kahlua, Amaretto. Uh, yeah, vodka, scotch. We had one called Smoke what after Pete. An so it? yeah, we were. They were all named after uh, different lovely alcohols because that's the kind of shit we did as kids because we're fun. Yeah. Ham sandwich wins. Yeah, yeah, Eric wants to know: Are you guys gonna make any uh, cast strength ones at all? Yes and no, like, 
Yes, we probably will in terms of we'll probably do it as a distillery exclusive when our um, visitor center opens up. But the thing about Cass Strength Whiskey, and um, it's actually fa fairly poignant. So uh, Harvey Fry, who, who who passed away recently, who was um, the whiskey uh, purchaser and um, sort of whiskey advocate of um, uh, the place in, in D.C., what was it called? Um Jack something's what's the name of that place? Jack something saloon, massive whiskey stand. Oh, Jack Rose Saloon in DC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, this old timer, he recently passed away. God bless him, and uh, what a nice guy. But he came over to me one time, and he goes, "When are you going to give me a cast strength stuff? I, I, I want bits of the barrel floating in, and I want to put a straw in it, and I want to double the stills." And I want to drink it like that, you know. But that's not a lot of people. Yeah, you know? it's so delicious. Though. Most consumers do not want that. You know, they True. do not want that. If you have anything over, and the price of it as well, you know, mm. you get like a nine-year-old, ten-year-old whiskey that's kind of strength, you're not looking at north of a hundred bucks, and you're not even making good money on that as a distillery. Uh, mm. No, you're making tight on that in terms of to get to that price point. Okay. You've been waiting, you've been waiting ten years for that whiskey. You know, you want to, you want you want people to enjoy it, but you want it to be a repeat buy. You know the way that sometimes you might buy a bottle, and uh, I, I have a couple in the other room, and they're great bottles, but I might go into them once or twice, or I may wait for the right person to come over and the right conversation to crack it open. You know, we want whiskeys that people will return to um, and cast strength whiskeys aren't usually staples for that and there are things that you, me uh, Will, Sarah everyone who's in terms of into whiskeys will say that's really cool but like if you're honest with yourself how often are you going back to that bottle? You I don't know, know. it's fun to share I know that I, I know so, the one I got is like black a, like, like a cask or two or maybe three of it. Yeah. And uh, just do it straight out of the distillery or something like that because it's just not not it's not always there. You know, we'll so, need to come to the distillery to get it. I'm fine with this plan. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm already coming there to hug my tree. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So whiskey notices. When I ship whiskey, I always tell them it's a fucking lamp. <laughs> that's awesome. Nice. Nice. Like a lava lamp or something like that. Yeah, that's, that's a great one. I like that. That's great. Yeah, so speaking of all the super chats, I know that I've talked to earlier. We're going to be giving a giveaway of some cool merchandise Ooh. that Donald's going to put you putting together. He doesn't know what it is yet, but he we talked about it earlier. I have merchandise. Uh, I do have merchandise. <laughs> Matt sort of caught me off guard. Uh, I have shot glasses, I have t-shirts, I have a scarf, I have, um, I, have some cool, I have some cool stuff, I just don't have it to camera, but I guarantee you, it'll be the best swag you ever got your hands on, and because I'm caught off guard, I'll make sure of it, and it'll be a pack, you'll never forget it. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Farrell is going to be in saying, oh jeez, this is brilliant, you know, it's going to come with a personalized message. It's gonna be fucking fantastic. Sorry, again, but for oh, it's okay. I figure you got something there. It's all good. I wasn't worried about it. All right. Yeah, I, I, I definitely do. <laughs> Sam says he's sorry. He disagrees. I drink almost exclusively Castro. Thanks, Sam. Fair there play, to you, man. Fair play, to you. And like, I, I, I wish more whiskey consumers were into cast strength whiskey. It's like, you know, from a distillery standpoint, love it. We need to look at like what are what can we sell? You know, what can we sell to keep the doors open? You know what I mean? Keep yeah. on the whiskey. And cast kind of strength whiskey puts a lot of people away. And that's why it's something that we, we would more look at a distillery exclusive type of thing. And we'd look at that because people who are willing to go to the distillery. Are more your way inclined. Um, yeah, I agree with that. You know, it, 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 to, to the person that asked the question, that they're into it, and um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's just forget the swag. Send some poutine. 
Right. Well, Putin's going in the swag. Do we have like a, a question or something that, that everyone has to do? That's a good question. I, I think what what is a good okay, come with a trivia question. I think that'd be fun too. Okay. We, okay. You all right, so we got for the best swag ever from the whiskey wookie. <laughs> Woo! We got yeah, man. From Mike Franklin. Magnificent accent. Love the content. Thanks, Mike. Thank you very and then we got one from Donald. Merch for merchandise, also because of 13 year Mizanara is seriously a beast of whiskey. Fantastic, wonderful stuff. Thanks, Donald. Isn't it just man? Yeah, the 13 year. Really that sounds ready. beautiful. Do I have that in here? You do. You do. Is that what we're drinking next? We can move on to the 13 year Mizanara. You ready to move on to that one? Uh, I, I, I have it here for us. That's All right. Well, we can move on to that one. Another beautiful bottle. Matt, can I run to the kitchen and get myself a beer? Absolutely. Please. You, absolutely. Please do. Right. People entertained. My, my dog is going to run the show for a second. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. We like dogs. It'll be, it'll Puppy, be fun. You look after her, all right? <laughs> Hop up in the chair, pup. We can't see you down there. That's right. We want to see the dog. <laughs> I want the dog. The, dog is, not really the dog is not here. Yeah. This has been a fun stream so far, Matt. I really enjoy it when you get me owners. To talk I know. It's so much more fun. That started the, the brand and not just a, an ambassador, sir. Well, and I'm, 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 I'm I tried. We try. tried hard. Thanks, Sam, thanks, Sam, because Sam's the one who, who put us to get in contact. Sam. Right there, Sam, way to go, buddy. Sam's good peeps. Uh, this product is all really fantastic so far, too, Matt. Yep. Yes, it is. All I already knew oh, was a fantastic gosh. product. You, you guys know me. I'm always checking these things way ahead of time to know that – we're going to already have fantastic whiskey, but to get someone that's as, as compassionate about the whiskey than the owner, you can't really find much better than someone who started a brand. That's for sure. All right. I never told you how I got into the whiskey business. No, you have not. Tell us. So I, I, well, I, I originally um, worked as a promo person in my teenage years. Um, hmm. So I worked for this crowd called um, CMS Marketing, right? And they did... Jameson Promotions, Wicked, Bulmer, Cider, which is called Magners and all that type of stuff. And I was okay at that. And uh, I was running teams and stuff like that. I moved over here to the US and I worked for an independent bottler for Irish whiskey. This is before Irish whiskey oh. was a thing okay. uh, in the US. This is well before its time. And they're doing like weird styles. They're doing like single, single cast stuff. They're doing past strength stuff and all of that. And uh, I, I built that out. And all the time I was talking to my cousin about what was going on with the craft distilling industry and how people were doing bourbons and rice and how cool it was. Then I moved back home. We, we set up Ireland's first craft distillery from there. That's cool. That's Very really nice. cool. Yeah, and before all the gray hair. Yeah, you know, know. whiskey will do that to you. It happens. Uh, hey, uh, at least it's fun. You know, there could be a lot worse jobs in the world, that's for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, we really enjoy being on tonight. Thanks for staying up so late with us tonight. Thanks, uh, Donnie. Anytime, man. You know, this is our Super Bowl. I'm glad that we, we could be connected uh, and, and that we, we could talk, you know. Yeah, and hopefully when this crap ends, you get to come down here to Texas and we can have you in person. That would be even better. Well, I tell you what, I have a lot of friends in Texas. I have friends in Houston and I have friends in Austin. And I can't wait to get there. I try, <laughs> We did something with the, the Texas – North Texas Irish Whiskey uh, Irish Festival last mm, year. Cool. Um, it, it was good. You know, it was a video thing, but it would have been so much better in person. You know, when you yeah. get applied, like I know you guys are experts at it, and we we can get on like this. But for that, there was a degree of people in person. There's a degree of people online, and it, it was just you know, it's, like there's a great thing about whiskey is whiskey is stories. Whiskey is a you know, Absolutely. whiskey is people and whiskey is like sitting down and having a conversation. And, you know, I just miss like having a room full of people and be able to fucking, yeah. excuse my language, Matt, but be able, to buy, be able to vibe off them and see, and read the room, you know what I mean? And see and bring people along, you know? Oh, God, Travis, it's just because you're awesome. I've had a lot of fun tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Travis. Travis, make, 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 excuse me, make sure that you message me um, because if you don't, I will forget and I don't want to forget because uh, when we say things, we have to be, stick to them. So please message me uh, your address, your name, and I'll make sure that I send you a bottle of the pop still, I believe, and then I'll, I'll send you one of the hats as well. 
Okay, oh. so Donnie Austin, do you guys have? Is it sold in uh, Tennessee at all? It is not. Uh, you, can get it, you can get it over the border in Georgia, or you can get it through a reserve bar. We'll be able to ship it to you, to you directly, or thelickerbar.com uh, can also do the same. Okay. But we are not available in the state of Tennessee as of yet. We're in 24 states, but not not all uh, all 50 states. I'm sure that also olive oil can be taken care of. If, if need be, you guys that can't reach it, we can work something out for that for you guys. Yeah, and, and you know, if, if there's anyone who reaches out to you, Matt, and you want to put them in, in, into communication with me, I'll be happy to direct them to the right person or okay. to look after myself personally. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, so we want to get good whiskey in you guys' hands and you can't hold this. It's something you really need to, and especially for a new brand that's really doing it the right way and it's excellent whiskey. Um, yeah, I would definitely suggest you guys buy some of this stuff. It's yeah, I am, I'm digging on this one. It's starting to get into like the, 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 older, Irish. the older Irish tropical feel. Oh, well, I tell you what, this whiskey is an absolute comedian of the whiskey. Uh, nobody knows what it is. And by, by design, it's a classic Irish single malt, but it's aged in Mizanara can. Which is Japanese oak, which is Quercus Mangalaka. Mizanara means water wood. We learned about Mizanara when we learned about our own indigenous oak. And okay. why they actually even use Mizanara, which takes between 300 and 500 years to grow the trees themselves. They don't grow straight. They are a pain in the arse. They're prone to cracking. They're prone to leaking. Cooperages became, and Coopers themselves became extremely skillful at using the only oak that they could use left after the Second World War because they, the trade embargo between the U.S. and Japan, early ages of the Japanese whiskey industry, they had to use these casks. So more and more we learned about this. We thought it was cool. It's all hell. We went over to Hokkaido through a very, very loose introduction through a cooperage brokership. So essentially this crowd that had the rake of barrels, they got barrels from this other crowd, Natural Cooperage, a couple of years ago. And the fact that we went out there, met with them, learned about their oak, walked around with them. They never seen, we're scallywags, you know what I mean? We don't all own a fucking suit in the lot of us. You know, so we go over there and we actually pay homage. We actually went into their cooperage. 14 people working the cooperage the oldest cooper in Japan makes these barrels for us and ship them to Ireland. They didn't say, they didn't say Glen Glock, Glen Glock Irish Whiskey Limited, Glen Glock, New Timber, Kennedy County Wicklock. They just said Ireland them. should have never even shipped anything to Ireland before. They decided the barrels is Ireland. So yeah. we ended up getting this and what we wanted for, for this in, in my short story along with all the rest is we wanted this Cara influence of the Japanese whiskey is for and like Sarah said, it's this tropical, like mango, pineapple, sandalwood, uh, nectarine. Yes. Apricot, you know that yes. bright yellow fruit, and then that like nutty and woodsy element. Mm. That is Mizanara for us and for Mizanara itself. We wanted to bring that classic Irish single malt, like we tasted with the seven year. That's very malt forward. Mm. We wanted to bring that down a couple of notches and go off into the, you know, go off the map a bit. And this whiskey's been an absolute belter for us. It's put us on the map. Got voted in the top 20 right. the world, uh, by Whiskey Advocate. It's a chameleon of a whiskey, as I said prior. It is a single malt. So people are like, I like single malts, I might like this. It also has Japanese calligraphy on the front of it that says Mizunara. So Japanese oh, that's, that's my question was, what is that? But it answers my question that that's the, that's, that says Mizunara there in Japanese. Yeah, they, they just wrote Ireland on our casks. And, okay. uh, That's cool. You know, we were expecting a bit more credibility than that, to be perfectly honest. We were expecting, like, you know, Blend Lock to sit you know, some, something like that in Japanese writing. That right. would walk somewhere. Sure, uh, right. they, they it's fucking that. awesome. So, I think that would be cool. Wrote, uh, that, that's just missing the R in Japanese. Okay. Yeah. I love this. Oh, cool. I think, yeah, as Donald says, it's one of the best Irish whiskeys to produce, period. If you don't have it, have it, slap yourself and then go find a bottle. Man, when is this all gone? Because I tell you what, this is one of our vintages along with the seven year. 
Uh, we we mm. produce these and we produce them in a limited amount. And when they're gone, they're gone. We have a core range of our double barrel, our pop still, and we all the, are going to be always there. Um, you know, different iterations of the pot still Irish oak, mm. but they're always going to be there. But some of our older and rarer and single cask, and uh, we sort of see them as more um, sort of innovations. So they're in, and then they're you know we produce them in a limited amount. So when they're gone, they're gone. You know, um, which is a fun flavor profile. We love it. But we don't <laughs> make enough of it for it to be a consistent thing. It's so um, Donald. She wants everything. Well, that's good. Yeah. Well, you will be very happy to see you then tomorrow. She wants everything. You know what? I went up and bought. I went up and bought another. <laughs> I went up and bought another Middleton the other day, Matt. Oh my gosh! We you don't another... talk about other whiskeys here. Well, we only talk about Marty whiskey. I'm sorry. Well, I'm gonna. <laughs> uh, apparently, I have to go and buy. So far, every damn one of your. Just whiskeys. wait till you try the one after this. <laughs> can I ask a? Can I ask a naughty question? You can ask any question you like. Yeah, you said your not. distillery was ten years old, and I'm drinking a thirteen year old whiskey. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the How does that work out? Add up, does it? So our older whiskey, and geez, you'd be more surprised that there's a seventeen year coming down the line. <laughs> okay. It's also twenty five year. It wasn't even the notion at twenty five years. So our older whiskeys come from a distillery that was about to be purchased by a multinational. And we, we Irish whiskey is very small, so we knew the people who were essentially handling the warehousing. So before that deal was done for that other distillery, we managed to secure interesting parcels of whiskey, like a 13-year-old Irish single malt, in barrel, you know, singular in style, would have been gobbled up into a blend, which is typically what, um, what most distilleries were putting out into the world at that stage. Okay. And we managed to secure that and it gave us the flexibility to be able to set up and do a variety of different things, but be able to do that and release it singularly and um, in new depths. And that's where stuff like this comes from. So we have this classic Irish single malt, 13 years in bourbon casks, sitting in our distillery. And we transfer like three, I was actually four barrels into a, in, into a new Mizanara cask and we release this whiskey. Mm. So you guys got a brand new Mizanara cask, never been yeah, used. Yeah, but, yeah, Virgin had nothing else in a prior. Uh, what would you say is more of a medium heavy toast? Okay. Uh, not quite a char, but like a medium heavy toast. Okay. That is so interesting. Fucking good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, you're going on our website, Sarah from Whiskey Crusaders. It's so fucking good. Do it. <laughs> Do it. It's, it! It is beautiful. It's, it's the truth. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I what I love truth. about this whiskey is if you put that into a glass, you take away all this crap, you take away the Irish guy with the accent, you take away all the logos, you put that into a glass, right? Yeah, it's... Where, it's where's the, where's that whiskey from? Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's, no it's idea. Point. No idea. Is it no. Japanese? Maybe. Is it Scotch? Probably not. Is it Burberry? Probably not. Maybe some weird distillery. Is it Irish? I don't fucking know. I, I, I really don't know. This is a whiskey for resolving all the world's problems at two o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's complex, it's different. What the hell is going on in the nose? What's going on in the front? What What is going on with this? Nobody I think, knows. I you think know? after I taste it, like, sorry, I, think after, I think after tasting it, I, I would probably guess an Irish after drinking some of the older Irishes that we've drank, and mm -hmm. it leads that way. It's got those tendencies for me that I love. Yeah, it's got those super awesome tropical fruits. Yes. Yeah, and, and old That's Irish, especially. Brought, the, I, I love the strong ma mango, uh, mm -hmm. pineapple, and all up front, but I like the malt characteristic on the back end yep. that sort of uh, stays with you. Do me a favor. Can everyone grab their glass with, with, with this whiskey in it, right? All right. Give me a solid on this, okay? Crack, mm -hmm. crack into it there. Love it. Love it. Everybody take a sip of this and put up your hand like this when you stop tasting it on the finish. Okay? Oh, hang on, hang on. We're, we're, hang on, we're not done yet. We're, we're, we're waiting on Matt. We're waiting on Matt. All right. All right. One, two, three.
been swallowing. Finish is going to go on. Mm. We'll put our hand up when the finish is up. Over. Over. Oh, sorry. I'm like 10 seconds in and I'm still tasting. Oh, it's still there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm still tasting so, it. I'm still getting the. the, the I'm nice getting a warm. Yeah. The woods. The woods are like the cedar wood and like quite. This is only not. Awesome. It's not I so, so different. The it's warming so sensation from inside is just still there on that. You, 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 you must not be tasting it right now. It's gone. No, it's no, still I'm, still, I'm still there. I've still got it. It's still there. It's amazing. I'm about 15, 15 seconds in, I can honestly say it's gone now. From 15 seconds in. Yeah. Mine's starting to clip. Mine's starting to go. I, I, I get it. I don't know if I this whole situation, but like about 10, 15 seconds. Oh, is please. the 13 year discontinued? Yes, it is. It is a vintage for us. We had a limited number of casks. Oh. They're all sold. You'll find it if you go to winesearcher.com and you have that whiskey searcher app. There's a rake of places that have it in New England, New York, a couple in California, and they ship nationally. But if you find it, it's on shelves in a couple of places. Don't pay secondary on it because we have a problem. This whiskey should be ninety to hundred dollars. If you see it for two, two fifty, three, four hundred, do not pay that because that's astronomical. You know that's not what the whiskey is supposed to be paid for. And then that that sort of money's to water in terms of how you enjoy it. Pay ninety bucks, hundred bucks, one hundred and ten or twenty at the at the most. Very at much. the fucking most. You know, we, we, we don't all talk like Conor McGregor, you know, fucking this, fucking that. But, um, <laughs> but you know, at, at the most, I, I would pay $120 for this whiskey, and you shouldn't pay a penny more than that. I, I, I think, think it's worth so every true. bit of 120 I think, I so think I, I'm happy that you have the MSRP at 90 90 to 100 uh, that, that would be a fair price for it. I, yeah. And I agree with you. I think that's that's actually giving your your get your your customers, you know, a good a good deal for a really good whiskey, uh, because this is beautiful. So I do have a question in general on Irish. How come Irish seems to be the only type of whiskey that gets these beautiful, amazing tropical notes that are this kind of tropical? I only find on Irish. I don't find on any other type of whiskey that gets that. Same. What causes that? Um. All right, so how long have you got? So we're about two hours in. As long okay. as you want to talk, I'm happy to listen. Okay, so that depends on a couple of aspects, right? So if you're looking at the like the lighter tropical note, that mm. might be there to triple distillation, which Irish whiskey can be triple distilled and it can also be double distilled. Um, that's initially what I probably think that it's coming down to. Um, but I think it's malt and triple distillation do give, lend themselves to picking up some of those beautiful mm. sort of tropical and citrus notes. Um, like malt plays with citrus really well. And if we look at that in our pot still whiskey, that is like this fancy orange marmalade note. That's a four-year-old. It's not like a super, super year old, super like crazy um, age statement to it. So I think it's malt and I think it's triple distillation. Okay. Uh, it's a short answer to you. But the long answer is Irish whiskey. There's such a depth and diversity mm -hmm. to it. More so than Scotch, more so than bourbon, more so than anything. There's three styles you can make on the island of Ireland, right? You mm -hmm. make single grain whiskey, which is going to come off a coffee still or a continuous still or a patent still, which are all sort of interchangeable, which is light, bright whiskey, like the double bar that we first tried. You can have single malt whiskey, which is 100% malted barley, either double or triple distilled, like we tried with the seven year. So big, heavy, malt backbone. You can have pot still whiskey, like we tried with the pot still Irish oak, which is unmalted and malted within it. So there's three styles, and uh, single pot still is known for texture, big, that spice, we geeked out about it. There's only two styles of whiskey you can make in Scotland. You make grain whiskey, you can make malt whiskey, and blends thereof. So now you look at Ireland, three styles. So you can have a triple blend, a double blend, a pot still blend. Now, let's throw a layer of complexity within that. You can have double distillation or triple distillation. Huh? Now let's throw another layer, of the, uh, uh, another layer of complexity to that. You can have peated whiskey or unpeated whiskey, right? 
Right. Now, if that's even before we're looking at the malt, the, the malting process, mm. before we're looking at what grains are used, blah, 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 before we're looking at that. Now, let's throw another layer of complexity into it. Irish whiskey doesn't have to be aged in oak. It can be aged in wood. could be chestnut. could be fucking mm. early wood. Wow. could be this weird breed uh, of oak called snake wood, which I found that grows in Brazil. Oh, okay. Because it, it looks like a snake. You know, you can't make a cast from it. It's be terrible. It doesn't have the, the, the chemical sort of density to be a cast. But you can do whatever the hell you want. You know? Could be could be beach. Um, it could be a beech tree. And beech trees were a big mm. factor in Irish oak trees mm. not being dominant. So that might be a bit of a sort of fuck you to that. <laughs> you know, it, it, it could work out. It's yeah. the point. So if you look at the complexity of what an Irish whiskey can be compared okay. to a scotch or compared to a bourbon, you're only scratching the surface talking to me and talking about my whiskies. There's so much more that, that is coming out from, from us. And, and I, I'm just off a call earlier. There's 40 distilleries in Ireland. You know, yeah. there's, three, there's three distilleries when we started up. I have a map here in the back of this here that you see over there. There's yeah. 300 large distilleries in Ireland. That's a map of the large distilleries and then the new distilleries over it. Beautiful map. Um, but we're only starting to see, but long story short and short story long, you know, we're only starting to see uh, really interesting Irish whiskies coming from uh, coming from distilleries now. And what you guys are doing with this YouTube channel and sharing the story of what Irish whiskey is and what Irish whiskey isn't as well. Um, we really appreciate it, and uh, I know the Irish Whiskey Association, uh, Association appreciates it. And anything that could educate people on the length and breadth and diversity in Irish whiskey, absolutely, uh, we're massive advocates for. Yeah, we, well, we love all the time. With Irish, it's one of those things where you have to get one of each category, right? Yeah. You want to try a single grain, you want to try a pot still, and you want to try a single malt. <laughs> And you want to get one of each to kind of understand what Ireland has to offer uh, as far as whiskey goes. So it's really, it's really a fun, it, it's it's a fun category in and of itself because it has variation within it. Bourbon has n basically no variation within it. Yeah, it's all. It's I, I, I wouldn't say that because you could have weeded bourbon, high rise, low it, rise. That's straight, true. That's right. But we're talking about completely different grains. We're talking about Dots. completely different distillation. You problems. know, uh, Irish whiskey deserves a sit down. And um, I was off a conversation earlier, and uh, it was on this weird, this new app called Clubhouse. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm, I, I'm an absolute dinosaur, so I don't know about these things. Okay. So it's a, it was on this conversation, and it's like, you know, there's a threat to Irish whiskey. Because there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, unknowns are good, but unknowns are bad. You know, I know I have a pair of jeans on, right? And if I go, and this is going to be a weird story, right? Yeah. I know if I go to the, I know what what brand I do, what blah, 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 blah. I know how to get a pair of jeans. If I go there and there's boot cut, straight edge, blah, 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 blah. If there's like, 45 different style of jeans. I'm going to yeah. go in there, I'm going to be fucking confused. And I'm yeah. going to go to Starbucks and fuck off. Excuse my language. You know, so I think we need to define our message a bit a bit more. But to your point, Will, I think Irish whiskey is a sit down, it's a conversation. And I think the conversation starts with the pot still whiskey. Mm -hmm. Because you're eating and drinking in a glass of it, and it's sit down, it's a, it's a storytelling you know, big, heavy, chewy whiskey. And mm. it is the defining point within Irish whiskey. We do single grain, single pastel, and single malt. But I think of all three styles, I think single pastel is the most uniquely Irish of, the, you know, sort yeah. of I, I, I think the conversation should start with um, stop selling three-year-old uh, whiskey that just tastes horrid. Uh, I want to bring up 17 year old whiskey because we only got about 12 minutes left and I'm going to get through this one and some, uh, some, some, uh, what are those ones called? Gin. 
Gin. Gin. Yes, gin. gin. Yeah, I, 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 I don't sell uh, anything blended. It doesn't come from my distillery. Right. So you don't do any blends. Uh, every one of our whiskeys is a singular in style, barrel by barrel age and non chef filter. We don't do blends at all. And uh, we don't do three year olds. So say, knows, he also would like a hat if possible. <laughs> Thank you. I just gotta say, we usually have, usually we have our dump glass that's, that's full, full of whiskey. Yeah. There's no there's no dumping tonight. I drank it all. i seriously, I haven't dumped a single thing. Everything it's has been delicious. Like, oh, I have to drink well, all that though. Yes. What I think for a lot of people in the Irish in general is most of have had Jameson. That that's all they've ever had. And they're like, all right, Irish. I'm like, well, what have you had? You only had some basic stuff. I'm like. You had onion you know, in a bottle. You had Jameson. right Jameson or proper twelve. If that's all you've been, you bring about some it's, of the, you know you guys stuff or some of the other oh, stories that are really there's no such like, thing as a bad Irish whiskey. This yeah, is yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> If you're on a board, you have to say that. Matt, tell me about the There's no such thing as a bad Irish whiskey. This one, a basic Irish whiskey. We want to give them really good, more interesting Irish whiskey, not the okay. Yeah, we want the milk. We oh. won't call it bad. We'll call it basic. Oh, it's bad. I'll, I'll say hi to our buddy Larry over at uh, Union 42 Bourbon and Brew in Union, Kentucky. If you guys get out to his bar, please check it out. One of the best bars in America. All right. This is the most beautiful freaking box. Yeah, it is. I'm so glad that I got to talk to you before this. You're like, you, you got to get it. I'm like, okay. Because I was like, I don't know anything about this. So Where did you find it, Matt? Uh, it uh, opened up. Oh, God damn it. Why did I say that? The uh, I was like, well, I don't know. And you said let get some air. Now it's had some air for. Oh my god, this thing is fucking spectacular. William has one. Matt, Jesus Christ! What did you do, Matt? You shouldn't curse like that. Your mother wouldn't like it. My mother doesn't fucking care. <laughs> she also talks that way, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> so she think- also loves whiskey, so it's also good. Well, if, you're, if you're doing it, I might do as well. Oh, so I mean, this is part of our connoisseur series. This so is every just... year we release in like you know we talked about some of our vintages. Vintages we're probably doing like fifty to hundred barrels, so it can be a somewhat general release, right? This is uh, limited to ten barrels. That's it. Oh. So if you look at the notation on the front, it's going to tell you what bottle, uh, what barrel it's from. Ten barrels, which is about five thousand and change, just shy of six thousand bottles, and that's it. Five barrels were for the U.S. Five barrels were for the rest of the world. Every year we're releasing a connoisseur series where we use the oldest, rarest, and most unique Irish whiskey in existence. This whiskey here is fifteen years in a first of bourbon cast and a solid two years in Virgin Mizanara. So Jeez. we're playing with that sort of balance and act between the classic Irish single malt, malt forward, you know, sort of like dark malt, toffee, not, not so much toffee, but like this bready, sort of yeasty component and this like uh, almost like chocolate note to it. And oh. then this tropical Mizanara, as we did with the 13 year, but this lands. Fuck me. Fuck you. Yeah. This is it's 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 grilled pineapple. Like yes. seriously, like a, like a Brazilian restaurant. You know, you know, you know what I get from it? it? I, I I get like a lime zest, lemon yes, lime get, zest, oh, and orgeat so syrup. Amazing. If you know orgeat syrup, it's like an almond syrup that they use in tiki cocktails. It reminds me of a of a of a zombie or a tiki. Or a, um, what's what's the what's what, what the fucking called? Mai Tai cocktail. Oh, God bless, dude. This is this is gonna be. Uh, I I know Will and Sarah. You don't have the uh, actual bottle in front of you. Forty six ABV. Yeah. So this is this so is that's actually getting a, a little bit closer to cast strength. I believe this whiskey was fifty one at cast strength after seventeen yeah. years. Um. So we diluted down just to stretch it out. Otherwise, it would have been like 4,000 and like 800 bottles. So you okay. want to, uh, 4,000, no. Yeah, it would be like 4,000, nearly 5,000 bottles, but we want to stretch it out. It's nearly 6,000. Makes sense. Yeah, because this is uh, cast 10. This is bottle 272 of 615. I know yeah. we got a super chatter from Robot Scott. Let me grab that real quick. So, uh, so we, we, we have that leaked on us with that. 
and uh, it, sort of, it sort of fucked up the numbers a little bit. It made my St. Paddy's Day shopping really fucking expensive. Yeah, but it says, this is tonight made St. Paddy's Day shopping easy. Cheers. Thanks, Robot Scott. Here's my stimulus. You will, uh, you will, uh, <laughs> I'm sure that many liquor stores will be very happy tomorrow, and they sell lots of Glendalock. I think they'll be great. I'm sure that William at Mirage is going to be thrilled as so, they get hit up tomorrow. What does this run, if you can find one? Well, uh, uh, like three, three fifty dollars. Yeah, we do a twenty-five year, um, which is the rarest Irish whiskey in existence. How much is that one? Like, you can't find it. But no, I understand. Like, but how much is like, it? Like, re- retail is like five hundred bucks, but it's like that's it. Yeah, that's it. Oh, that's it. I, I'd love to find one. Shit. But it's you, like, you want fifty cents a year? I'll pay you that for sure. <laughs> Jeez, I wouldn't mind getting paid out, but yeah, no, that whiskey is uh, is gone. Really, I, I, I'm following it over there. Um, we were talking about it in the chat earlier. Huh? We have we have a a, a resident uh, Irish whiskey. He's our whiskey Irish whiskey Yoda. Uh, his name uh-huh. is Paul France, and he's writing a book on Irish whiskey. Oh, uh, nice. Good for you. Well, Donald, I know where another seventeen year lives. Shut up, I. Don't <laughs> let me try first. <laughs> I don't know. He might have more than one though. That's he true. Has, it's William. He has so many freaking. He might have. I think there's a. Is it? Can they come in three packs when they go to the stores? Yeah, usually? yeah what, the, the fancier ones do. Yeah. So he's got got two, two more. So, so what? He might have two more. I think, I think it might be in three hundred. Would, would I be right in saying that Specs is the thing in Texas, isn't it? Texas yeah. is in Texas, yeah. Really? But yeah. Mirage, yeah. They, have, they have a couple of bottles of them. They have the 25 um, there or just the 17? Just the 17. Um, Wonder what 25 is cool because there's only two casks produced less than 800 bottles. Did it, so is any of it in the U.S. or just all sold out already? No, it's a, it, most of it's in the U.S. 600 bottles came to the U.S. Wonder, okay, any idea where any of it is that we could find? Yes. Okay, we'll talk yeah. after this about that. We'll talk yeah. after this about the twenty-five year because I, I would like to procure such things. Yeah, what man. I love about the seventeen that we're trying now is comparison to the other thirteen. The other okay. the thirteen is tropical, right? It's tropical and yeah. like bright yellow. Now this gets into green tropical. This gets into like lime. Gets into like that, that darker citrus, mango, that weird, that weird fruit. I can never remember the name of it. That's like lime, but not really lime. But it's, it's all that like green citrus oh, note, lots of almond, uh, which is completely different. Then in terms of the texture, this is slightly higher ABV, but completely different texture. The other one's velvety. This one is like hovers. It does not have a texture. It does not have a texture. Because yeah, of, like, it's the uh, air ABV, but also yeah, it pounds okay. into your tongue. It is it is beautiful and passionate whiskey for sure. Yeah, like I said, the one's all velvety and flowing. This one's all just into your tongue and like, oh my gosh, it wants to beat you. It's beautiful. So <laughs> this oh, this is, dick. uh, dictionary. We miss you here in Massachusetts. Oh my god, I used to live in Massachusetts for about seven years. Uh-huh. I, I have so much love for Massachusetts. I hope to be back. Very, very soon. I wonder who that is. That's uh, Bill the Wiki Dick. I was actually born in Massachusetts. That's my, that's my, yeah. That's my adopted home, I tell you. Well, my wife's from Massachusetts. She's from South Boston. We used to live in Dorchester. Okay. Yeah, I was born in Springfield. I'm going to leave a little bit of that in my glass. Matt, let's quickly touch on the gins. Okay. Well, we I'm going to keep drinking this before we get to the gins. I think we, this deserves... A few moments of special time. Okay, topic. that's fair. It does. You can't go. Oh, it is going to talk about gin. Well, we have to wait a few minutes. We have we have beautiful seventeen year whiskey in your glass. This is this is freaking beautiful. And this to me gets into mango, papaya, guava. And it's uh, also better. Guava, guava, guava is a great one. Well, to be honest, yes. With you. It, and this this gets into all of those tropical notes. And it, and to me, and and again, I, I kind of picked this up because of knowing uh, Donald. Is is that the, those older Irish um, notes tend to get into those um, tropical notes because of the ex bourbon casks um, and just those ex bourbon barrels really just do a number on on uh, on Irish whiskey. They really do, mm. and it's a beautiful number. It's it it can be played over and over in my mouth. Yeah, 
I, I could sit here and drink this all night and not even have to pick up something oh. else. Yeah, Bill has said he shadowed you many times. He said he met you at Julio's. Oh, Julio's Liquors, yeah. What's happening, Bill? How are you? <laughs> no doubt, no dude. Yeah, he, he, he's a bit of a legend. He is. Yeah, he's only got 50. 50 he hit 50,000. 50,000 so subs on his channel. Yeah? Yeah. yeah man. Uh, he's a big you one. What, Julio's Liquors, they, they have a little uh, score sheet, right? So I, I know all this is great, but it, it, it's a business. You have to sell bottles, right? So yes, I have the record in Julio's Liquors of how many bottles I sold at a, at a two-hour tasting. Very nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. I, I, I sold 48 bottles in two hours. Damn. That's impressive as hell. Yeah. That's insane. And I can understand why. why? Yes. <laughs> yep. There's so, a yeah. Our buddy, the Whiskey Samurai. If you haven't checked out Whiskey Samurai, channel check out his as well. Oh, God. If you can find yourself a 17 and bottle of this Glendalock, I highly suggest you pick one up. It's freaking awesome. I will. Can't wait to review this. Oh, my yeah, God. No and sit for probably an hour. You know, the, the finish to this does not give as much as the finish to the 13 year prior. You know what? Um, I, don't, I, 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 actually, feel, I don't disagree with you on that. I, yeah. I remember that one going for a lot longer than this one does. It does kind of fade oh, off faster. I like the texture to this in terms of the mid palette. Mm -hmm. And then I love the nose to this. I love the nose to the 13 year, but I love the, the nose to this a little bit more. I like the texture to it. I like mm -hmm. the front of palette, you know, and I like the fact that the malt characteristic is mid palette with this. And it's finished with the 13 year that's that's behind me there. And it's for us with with, with the Mid and Arna, and we're gonna go into it more so with different releases that we do. It's a balancing act between the malt characteristic of the Irish single malt and the tropical cara nutty, the weird component that Mid and Arna can bring. And balancing that so both of them fit together. In harmony in a whiskey will not be one over a power in the other. You know what I mean? Well, you just blend them both in the glass like I just did. There's your problem solved. Wait, did you put you put the 13 year and the 17 year in the glass? Yes, I sure did. Gimme, 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 gimme. Oh my gosh, that smells amazing. Gimme, gimme. Hey, what, what is this Judas doing over here? <laughs> what we do, man, we blend our whiskeys. Um, Sometimes distillers don't get it right. Sometimes uh, there were better creations that could have been made, and we. Oh tried my to god, that's fucking awesome! I need a little bit more of the seventeen. You should do it. No, give it to delicious. me. Holy crap! Oh, is I good? I'm not doing that. That's, that's, that's not, that's beautiful. Not, that's oh my god, that's awesome. He's already going hide in the seventeen. Well, in case. So. In you case. Know, hey, we would need a rep in Northeast Tennessee, Southwest Virginia, Western Kentucky. I'm your, I'm your fucking man. <laughs> You know what? Oh, Jesus. You know what? Yeah. I actually, I don't want to rep for one company, but this might be a company I could get behind. Uh, also, I know Dustin uh, said he can't get it in Ohio either, which also Dustin is on Top Shelf. Uh, if you want to check out his channel too, also another awesome whiskey channel. What Top Shelf? So apparently Ohio does not get it either for whatever reason. Uh, it's, it's, uh, Ohio is what they call uh, control states. Is it, so basically control states, it's just a problem more or less to get it well, in there. You, you know what, Matt? It, like the whiskey business is a tough business, business. And if you go into a state because of the three-tier system, you need to get a distributorship to sell your product. I cannot sell you a product. I need a distributor to right. sell it to a liquor store to sell it to you. Yeah. So if I give it to a distributor, they're not going to do anything unless I sort of pay them, and you know, um, or I have the bandwidth to go there every every quarter and meet with the dude, do the pricing thing, and then there's a bandwidth element of like bill and back and this and that, and oh. you like this is not the fancy element of the business. It's yeah. fast moving consumer goods. You know, billing issues. Like, so I don't have the bandwidth to do any of that anymore. And, like, lucky enough, yeah. I don't have to do any of it anymore because we'd be nowhere if I was doing it. We'd be nowhere at all if I was doing it. I'm fucking awful lot. I can barely spell my own name. You know, I know yeah. a lot about whiskey, but, like, uh, you know, 
Um, so, but there are certain states that are controlled states that are more difficult to do business with than others. So we are in most metro areas, coast to coast. So we're in California, we're in um, Seattle, or we're in Washington State, we're in um, Denver, like Colorado, mostly Northeast, Mid-Atlantic, South, blah, blah, blah. We're in like 22 states, something like that. And no. uh, most of those states ship to other states. So <laughs> if you go to Reserve Bar or liquor, liquor, the, the liquor baron.com, they'll ship it to your door. He says... Whiskey now says, pay me, I'll make it happen. <laughs> okay, so... Make it happen and I'll pay you. There you go. These two were, like, meant to be put together. These two whiskeys were great. Exceptional whiskeys on their own. But then you put them together in the same glass and just... There's no way I'm putting them together. <laughs> it, you know, it, we, it, we, God, it makes... Each of these for the flavor profile that they were. No, no, no. Uh, you take the 17... You know, the and 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 stuff over there. You Judas, you, uh, it's you so know, whatever, other things. Sir, I'm about to put Pete in your whiskey if you keep up that attitude. Oh, Jesus, don't be doing that. Don't be doing that, Will. He's going to put Ardbeg 10. Words. I'm going to put some Ardbeg in there, man. Come on. Jesus, if you, open, if, you, if you open a bottle of Ardbeg, I'd smell it over here. <laughs> <laughs> you, know what we used, you know what we used to do with putching at a, a whiskey show and then we tamed our putching down to 55 but we used to have um, like a fairly high putching right I used to bring it to whiskey shows and uh, I used to have it maybe I think it was like 71, 72 something like that someone would come over with a glass like like you have there and I, I, I fucking smell the scotch from a mile off I take their glass Rinse it, uh, rinse it out with putching and light it on fire. Then I throw it out. Then I put putching and I light it on fire, throw it out. And go, all right. So I, I say that, like, you know, we got all the spirits out of that. You're over the other side, other side of the water. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that to every single glass you drink. <laughs> Freaking peated shit every, out of every part, every peated whiskey. Like, it, it, took most of the, it took most of it out, if I was fair. Uh, it took most of it out. But Jesus Christ, that stuff is oily and you know it's tough to get out of a glass yeah it is yeah, yeah. It yeah. Is. especially like um like lagavulin or um art bag or um some of the brook laddie stuff as well yeah Fucking hell tough to get out of a glass. you should have two glasses one for pete and one for one yeah yeah you usually do because it's it's too hard to get it out um, so, I, I, I was at a call earlier, um, and there's a, a gentleman from uh, Cologne Distillery, which is from County Down in Ireland, and it's where my mother's side of the family is from. And uh, he has the smallest distillery, in Brendan is his name, he's the smallest distillery in Ireland. And they're doing uh, some peated stuff, and they're doing some really small batch stuff. They're doing like a variety of different pot chains, and they're just really, really good crew. If anyone really wants to geek out about Irish whiskey and talk about like small batch grain to glass type operation, ask about Brendan Kill Owen Distillery. Google it. Just tell them you're chatting to Donald. I was talking to him on a panel discussion there earlier today. Fucking legend of a dude, and they're doing really good stuff. So uh, just yeah. wanted to, I really wanted to give him a shout out. Cool. Check Excellent. it out. All right. Well, I think we're going to have to circle back to the gin, Matt. We're at two hours. I want to keep this watchable for people. And oh, they're watching. They're, they're engrossed and living in it at this point because it's beautiful. All right. So I know Donald yeah. wanted to know about the history of your gin and what the special thing. So you want to start with the wild botanical gin just to. Yeah, get... sure. You know, we look, uh, we're, we're all whiskey heads. We always have been. We had no intention of ever making gin none whatsoever. Uh, we're very much into our grains and into our whiskeys. We did never have an intention of making this um, this absinthe, this Irish absinthe called McDonald's Ooh, absinthe. That sounds but This uh, fucking lunatic on a manor house in County Leitrim was making absinthe, uh, and it was discontinued. It's called McDonald's absinthe. It was discontinued in 1914 because of the Second World War. Okay. The First World War, rather. So we got a hold of some of the brand, and the brand was super cool and really okay. interesting. And it was like an Irish fairy and stuff. And uh, we got a hold of some of the recipe and we're trying to figure out sort of 
how the fuck they were making it, to be perfectly honest with you. And uh, we got introduced to a wild forager called Geraldine Kavna. Okay. And she quickly talked us out of making something that was so one flavor dominated. And her and her master distiller, Rowdy, got on like a house on fire. And she sort of got our heads out of our arses by just looking at whiskey and casks. And uh, what they started to make were wild terroir gins. So all of the botanicals are mm-hmm. handpicked outside the distillery. All really? within 10 miles. That's awesome. They're all, they're all exclusively pot still distilled. And um, heavy botanicals are macerated within the pot still. Lighter botanicals are hung, hung in a gin head. The okay. spirit itself is almost like a new make whiskey. It's 100% uh, quadruple distilled non-GMO organic corn. So it has a base level of sweetness to it already. And um, wild terroir Wicklow gins. Where we're from is known as the Garden of Ireland. And Geraldine literally five days a week will handpick botanicals. Wow. And bring them to the distillery fresh. And they are distilled fresh. Um, we're the only people in the world who do so. And uh, I wish we did it 10 years ago. It uh, makes up about 48% of all of our sales now. And uh, people love it, you know. And oh, geez, there's Geraldine, that's Brian there to the left. Geraldine's fa- fa- fantastic. Oh, I sent you a load of stuff. Yeah, he sent us all those cool photos. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's Geraldine. She's that's fascinating. Awesome. Um, I, I, I love Geraldine to bits. And she can tell you that a deer has passed four hours ago, and you'd be walking, you'd be walking to the mountains with her. I used to go to raves in the mountains when I was in the past. <laughs> like, like we used to do these things where we used to have a generator, we used to get a load of speakers, we used to get decks. That's Gary McLaughlin there, one of the founders. But uh, that's Kevin Keenan. He's also one of the founders. That's Brian Fagan, same deal, one of the founders. Here's one of you all together. That's all That's all five of us there. So see the guy who's older, balder, and grayer than me? Yeah. yeah that's my cousin, so that's the way I'm going, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. This is ex. I love the fact this is that this is non-show filter. I don't even ever had a non-show filter gin. Oh, it's super oily. Like, uh, I, I, don't, awesome. I don't have it to hand because I didn't think that we were doing it. Um, oh, oh, yeah, I'll show everybody this one. Yeah, when, when Will's done with the picture, I'll show you. Oh, no, there you go. You got to click off the picture, you goof. Here's this, the wild botanical gin. This this may be one of the best gins I've ever had. This gin is freaking fantastic. It's very cucumber forward. Oh, I love it. Um, d- down to that distillation method, uh, oh, yeah. method rather, um, it, it's oily, it's viscous. See that still that was to the to the left of Barry there. Um, we're 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 distilling in that still, so it's a pot still gin. That's awesome. That's awesome. So 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 the, the result of pot still versus column still it, it is going to be that it's thicker. It behaves more like a whiskey in a glass. So when you look at our, uh, that's a yeah, that, that's a still there. But it behaves more like a whiskey in a glass. So it's going to be thick and viscous, and the fact that there's oils in it from the actual botanicals, um, it, it's super oily. It's crazy. Yeah, this is fabulous. This is the whiskeys are, are obviously amazing. But yeah, if you guys are in a gin, this is really, really good gin. I love, both. I love alcohol in general, so but this is spectacular. You know, these are probably more whiskey oriented, but like. Um, these gins behave like whiskey. They're yeah, more this is a... And bartenders love them. Yeah. And in terms of like the bee's knees are like, um, mm. you know, looking at any of your, your classic gin cocktails, just a GNT, you're looking at a Martinez, you're looking at any of these type of things. Wait, here. Does a Martinez call for gin? Yes. Yes. Well, yes. You need to have a gin or a vodka martini. Not, not those bullshit vodka martinis that these. Yeah, vodka gin martini or a vodka martini. No, vodka. Like a, a, a Martinez. That's that's a rye whiskey drink. Sorry, I, I'm just. I'm, uh, is it? I'm just doubting myself. Martinez. Someone, someone, someone's going to jump in and correct me. But if you're looking at some of your like shaken cocktails. Yeah. Uh, it, it plays in beautifully. If you're looking at your stirred cocktails, like Negroni or like. A martini, it, it really plays well and it's really down to that texture and that oily quality to it. Um, and like, I, I w- wish we did it ages ago. 
And um, so with the Crusader, excuse me, sir, please ask about the Wild Winter Gym. So we originally started to do seasonal gyms. Oh, right? wow. we, 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 we would release it each season. <clears throat> but when we started to bring it over to the U.S., we would distill in winter. And by the time it came to the U.S. and it was shipped, it was spring or summer. We sure. used the season behind. So no one wants a winter gin in the, in the height of July. So we sort of died on the vine a bit there. And, and yeah, we started to do that type of thing. But we do seasonal gins in Ireland. And you'll only find it at the distillery at Ali's Place, which is called the Celtic Whiskey Shop in Dublin, or in uh, Dublin Airport. The only place you'll find are seasonal gins. And what the gin that you showed up there mm. actually takes a year to make. So yeah. Geraldine will forage and rarely will distill at every season. But also the micro climates within, are the micro seasons within seasons. Okay. And I know I'm fucking geeking out a bit here. Oh, ah, I'm sorry. Okay. Person. I love I, it. I know it upsets you um, fairly deeply. But um, so like an example of that would be elderflower. Elderflower okay. is elderflower for a number of weeks until it's elderberry. But there's a whole group of botanicals that are on the same sort of time set as that. Okay. So we'll distill that batch, right, of botanicals. Distill it, put it aside. Distill it, put it aside. So there's 32 distillations that are put to the side. Damn. And then married together, we don't blend whiskey, but we blend gin, but married together in a very specific ratio that represents all 12 months of the area where we're from in that glass, every single botanical. So there's actually 50 something botanicals within that, if you actually marry that up. So that, that bottle you have there took a year to make. That's very cool. Yeah, you know, most gins like, oh, done of the day, we're done. And we actually, we actually do distilling trips and tours with our gym. Like our visitor center is not open yet, but we do the distillery uh, foraging and distillation tours with Geraldine Cabinet. You can book those on some type of website that I don't remember what it's called. <laughs> That's awesome. I want to go for uh, gin stuff. You know, if they look at this, they're going to be like, Donald, you're just throwing, you're throwing yourself down, down the well here. Wow. So I, uh, I want to know how long does it take her to get enough for a batch? Like how much botanicals does it usually take to get a batch? Is that within the same week she does it, or does it take several weeks of picking to do that? Uh, her and Rowdy, Rowdy is our head distiller. He hates when anyone calls him a master distiller, but he's uh, he studied under uh, some really great master distillers, and I would consider him a master distiller. But uh, he hates being called on. He'll he'll stop okay. him in the tracks. But they have a, a very detailed schedule in terms of how they do it and okay. when they do it and what's needed and what worked last year in terms of what's needed for this. So there's certain ones that they need a lot of uh, and there's certain ones that they don't need a lot of. And uh, Geraldine, uh, and she, she's really, really magnificent in terms of how she does it. You want to pick a botanical, so say like water mint, you want to pick two thirds of that, and then it's going to grow back harder, and it's going to grow back bigger, and it's going to grow back better. But if you take none of it, it'll probably grow ten percent. So the fact that you take two thirds of it, it's going to grow back to like one fifty percent. Why? So it's going to do, it's going to like not not double in size, but like one and one and one and a half size. Yeah, fifty percent increase. 1.10. Uh, this is the weirdest math in the world. But you, I, I hope you're gathering what I'm saying. The, the actual act of taking two thirds of it away makes it more viable for growth and more viable for uh, sustainability. Because Geraldine is picking things like wild roses, and we need to go back there next year. You know, and what, what you, get, you can't pick it all. Right, so if you pick all of it, you can't get it next year, right? But if you pick two thirds of it, it's nearly going to double in size next year when you go back to it, which is a weird sort of oxymoron. Then you wouldn't even think of it. You yeah. need to, you need to cultivate these things, and um, 
you know, working with Geraldine has been absolutely f- fascinating in terms of what she knows and how she knows it and why she knows it and, and what's right in the world. You know, because that, that's right in the world because, like, the, there's things there and there's great flavor profiles. Like Waterman, for example, is a beautiful sort of earthy, minty quality. And, um, you know, the more that you do it, the more that you actually celebrate that flavor profile, the more that that's produced and produced naturally in, in fucking nature. You know, you take two thirds of it and 1.5 grows back, yeah. you know? So it's, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's fucking humbling if you actually think about things like that. It's pretty uh, wild. Yeah. Sorry, Matt, for cursing again. That's okay. It's fine. <laughs> So Donald wants to know is will the winter and autumn gin get a release beyond Europe ever? No. So Donald, find a friend in Europe. No, it, it, it's a, it's an absolute pain in the arse because um what like we, we, we can't manage it because you know if you ship it to Europe, you're gonna get a winter gin in July. You know, I, I we can't manage that. And we do it about eight miles to ten miles around the distillery, which is Greystones, where I'm from, Bray, maybe, Newtown, Wicklow Town, um, you know, Roundwood, and um, Rat New, and a couple of small towns. Anyway, so it'll be in those areas, Dublin Airport. It's gone, it's gone. That's you great. know, and it could, because otherwise you just, you just can't hold on to it. No, no, it's impossible. Yeah, which makes sense. All right, so what? And then we got your rose gin. So what? What exactly is rose gin? Because it's the first rose gin I've ever had. So this this actually is um, our master distiller who hates that term. His name is uh, Rowdy, Re- Kieran Rooney or Rowdy Rooney. So this is a tribute to his late mother Rose Rooney, who who reared him, and she used to keep a she used to have a rose garden. And um, this is his very fitting tribute to her. And um, he originally got rose petals from her garden after she passed away. Wow. And infused the previous gin for his brother's wedding for a toast. And uh, it went down that he did a very fitting tribute and he had a beautiful toast and it went down an absolute treat. And um, he told Geraldine about that and they sort of geek out about that and they wanted to make something that that he could make to sort of honor her. And her name was Rose. He used to keep a rose garden. And um, he originally started messing around with that. And he made, a, you know, something that was made with depth and meaning that really fitted into um, what she was about. You know, he uses three varieties of rose petals. He uses the mask rose, heritage rose, and a very elusive wild Irish rose. And no artificial flavor within it. There's rose petals within the maceration, and there's rose petals within the column, uh, within the distillation on, on the panel, and then there's rose petals infused after the fact, and that's where the color comes from. So it's a truly authentic um, representation of what a flavor and a color gin should be. And we've seen a lot of what people are doing here, and not we, it's more rowdy, seeing that there's all these colored. Mm-hmm. gins and flavored gins and a lot of it was artificial and you know it, like that sort of coincided with his mother's past and, and um, he wants to make something and that sort of was a fish, fish and tri- a fitting tribute yeah. uh, Rose Rooney and um, awesome. he, he, he gets choked up talking about it all the time and the fact that he can make a gin and he told Geraldine and Geraldine sort of pushed him on it to make it. And um every time he talks about it he, he really cuts up about it. And Rose Rooney, I, I, I only met her once, but um she was a hell of a woman and um she she gave us our master to still a rowdy and we're very proud of Rowdy and uh, and everything he's done. And yeah, um, yeah no it's a, it's a little bit of um emotional for for everyone at the distillery, if I was that's a hell of a tribute. That's that's really good, Jen. That's that's it really is good. beautiful, and the and the rose comes the, through so well. The, 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 yeah, you know, it's not artificial, and it's you know, you get just this smells wonderful characteristic in the mid palace. Um, and it, I I love the like um 
grapefruit citrus note that comes through in the nose. Mm -hmm. uh, it really plays. I like that Meyer lemon, like fat lemon grapefruit quality that comes through in the mid palate. And then like a like pink peppercorn and tannin note on the back end. Um, it, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. And people don't think, when you say rose, a lot of people think like old woman's perfume. Yeah. Like, like your grandmother's perfume, something it's like, um, what have you, you know? Uh, but this really shies away from that. And yeah. it, um, no, this is like smelling a, a bouquet a of roses. Yeah, exactly. It's like a fresh yeah. rose on a bush. I shop would say that, uh, in terms of talking about it, I would say it's like hitting it. A new, like Sarah, yeah, 100%. I'll often actually say that. It's like sticking your head into a, a bouquet of roses. Yeah. Yep. I like Beautiful. it. Yeah, they're both really well, good. Donald, thank you very much for being on with us tonight, man. This has been an absolute pleasure uh, going through all these whiskeys with you and, and and everything that you guys are creating. This has been really, really wonderful. And I learned, awesome. and I learned a ton of stuff I didn't know before, which is even Absolutely. Better. This is one probably one of our – this is – yeah, we've only had a few Irish on. This was amazing. And just all the awesome history you brought and just fucking phenomenal whiskeys, so – can't say enough good things about this stuff, and if you well, like, yeah. I, I appreciate it. It's been an absolute riot. I, I'm delighted that we could connect. Thank yeah, you cool. so much. Uh, it's a pleasure to share some of our some of our spirits and uh, a bit of our story with you. So Definitely. I really appreciate it. Happy St. Patrick's Day to y'all, and I'm going to leave you with a little bit of Irish, okay? Okay, please. So you get la fella potter son of Dave. So that means a happy St. Patrick's Day to you all. Yes. So, yes. Happy St. Yeah. Patrick's Day, everyone. So happy St. Patrick's Day to you. God bless. Thank you very much for the time. And uh, look after yourselves, all right? Yes. Don't go anywhere. Don't all go right. anywhere. I won't. Bye, yeah. everybody. Cheers, right. everybody.